would uh, call. Uh, I would call the meeting to order at six thirty-six. Um, adjustments to uh, the agenda. I have a couple. Um, okay. Uh, quick update on uh, the Rochester campus preschool. Okay. I guess these would all go under probably. Well, you can figure out when they go. I don't think any of them are big discussion items. Uh, efficiency Vermont. That's action. That would be an action one. Right. Isn't that, yeah, that's 8.2? Yes. And okay. asbestos work would be action. Can I get the budget that you emailed everybody else? Which, I'm sorry, email. what would be an action item? Asbestos work. She got so that would be 8.6 asbestos yeah. work. Right. I sent it out on Sunday. And I think the I other thing I'm going to add, uh, actually, actually we're going to make that, oh, just sure probably not. make that preschool an action. That might be a quick too. action we, okay. we want to take. Okay, so we'll call that 8.7 preschool. Got it. Thank you. And then another action item, school calendar sharing. School calendar, 8.8. .8. Yeah. Okay. Now, do we, get to, do, we have to, do we have to do that separately now, or is that, I thought that was Well, this is for the current year. Oh. We have a request. I, we have a request. Oh. Okay, can we go over all those? Because I was really not quite ready for the meeting just to Current <laughs> year calendar. So, yes. Not next. Maybe years. Eight points. Uh, maybe cross Carl, could you read back what we've uh, adjusted? Sure. Um, we had, uh, she, um, Bonnie had mentioned uh, efficiency Vermont, which is already action uh, eight, uh, is action item eight point two. Okay. Um, she then added action item eight point six, which is uh, asbestos. Okay. Apparently, our schools need more of that. Yeah. Uh, eight point seven. There's a pre-K action of some okay. sort or potential for action. It, was, it originally was a report that is now okay. moved to action because she might want us to do something. Okay. Uh, and then uh, uh, Lindsay decided that, or Lindy decided that um, uh, we needed 8.8 uh, .8, the current year uh, calendar added because she wants to make a change. Okay. Uh, I think she was jealous that Bonnie was doing all the adjustments to okay. the uh, agenda and uh, she didn't get to do anything. <laughs> and yeah. also I'm going to change number 13 executive session that I'm just going to say what I'm going to say. Okay, well we have we have we have an executive session already on there. Yes, but so now one another one. eleven needs to stay. Ah, okay. So maybe you want to move thirteen up. Well we can we can we can just do if if, if it's not gonna be an executive session, it's just gonna be said, then that can that can happily go under number five board comment. Yep. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. Oh yeah. So here we go. <laughs> We're off to the race. Um alrighty then. Uh <laughs> Has ever, everyone adjusted the agenda to their heart's content? Um, um, yes. Cool. Then we'll move on to uh, 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 public comment. Do you guys have uh, anything to say at this time? Does Feel free to jump in uh, anytime. You too. You're public as well, even though you're a camera guy. Um, so consent agenda. We have uh, three sets of minutes to approve. They're all in the packet. The uh, Tuesday, uh, March 5th minutes. The uh, special uh, Wednesday, uh, uh, the 13th minutes. And then uh, the third week. Oh, the 21st, March 21st special meeting. Which, did I see that in here? Yep, it's in there. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, Make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay, a motion has been made. Do I hear a second? Um, just on March 21st, it says Megan Wilt. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Which one was that? Yes. Um, I just saw it. Just yeah, five. where was it? Um, Thursday, March 21st, it's the 5 p.m. meeting. Oh, yeah. A silly little thing. But it's okay, we need it to be no, um, Just be yeah, right Maybe I wasn't sure which one. <laughs> we have just one other name change to uh, 4.110. It's Linda Gendro, G E N. D R E A U. Say that again. G E N D R E A U. Four point. I just feel so bad when we take excellent yep. to make those little. No, I don't. We better no, spell no, people. Right. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And Megan, you were at the. Uh, meeting on the uh, 21st? Um, yes, yeah, that was, that was special the special one. Right, right. Well, I just didn't know if it was 
uh, Megan Wilt, because she wasn't sure which she had, or someone said that she wasn't sure if you were yeah. both there or if only one of you was. Yes, they're both there. Okay, uh, any other uh, corrections, additions, or deletions? Nope. Uh, hearing none, a motion has been made and seconded to approve the slate of minutes as presented in the packet and amended uh, just now. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All the minutes are now official. Uh, board comment. Um, first of all, I'm not sure. You ha you guys have to give me feedback because I could go on about this a little bit, and I, I'm not sure that I want to tonight because of the budget meeting. Okay. So maybe I should just. Do you want to wait till after the budget meeting, and we can we can postpone board comments till uh, to the end? To see how long we're here, yeah. Because I could, I, yeah. I don't if know. I always kind of thought you were like si Silent Cal Coolidge, a woman of few words. <laughs> yeah, right. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll move. Uh, we'll move. Uh, uh, that's Mitch. <laughs> board comments uh, to the end, right? But we'll, we'll have to do it before uh, executive session. Yeah. It's down there. But Maybe actually, yeah. the second public comment. Yeah. Um. So uh, then we can go on to uh, board reports. Um, I don't have anything from Bruce. Okay. Can I send anything with me? Okay. So we can go straight to the principal's report. As we got it. Thank, Thank you. you. And it's okay. in the package. Right. Is there uh, anything that anyone has any questions about that? No, or, we don't. Uh, um, mm -hmm. Do we need to, uh, anything you guys feel that you want to uh, extemporize on? Well, not extemporized, but just to say quickly, I think Black River Design is doing a great job on fulfilling the work that we've asked them to do. They're very respectful of the fact that the officers are in the building, they call ahead, they sign in at the front office, they always let us know they're here. Uh, they took some pictures on our campus, a couple of youngsters showed up in the background, they called and said there were a couple of youngsters in the pictures, but they wanted us to know they weren't using it in there presentation, their information. So I think they're just an excellent one. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Wise choice, everyone. Whoever yes. did that, that was great. And then, go ahead, you want to say No, okay. The last thing I'll just point you to is, um, where's the preschool visit? Six. Uh, two, number two. Two. Um, oh. I wish I'd have had my phone when I walked into the cafeteria. The Stockbridge preschoolers came over to search for leprechauns, met their oh. Rochester friends, and they found coins. and little footprints all through the whole thing and it ended with a lunch in the cafeteria for everybody at St. Patrick's Day lunch and I walk in and here's this long table with all the preschoolers on it and at the end of it sits Harv Downs our bus driver overseeing the <laughs> St. Patrick's Day lunch That's and they great. had a big That's plate cool. for him it was just it, oh, it just I'm made so my heart go better. doing that really Absolutely. from the very beginning because they'll be friends now right. it'll just they be natural to be exactly. together I would say that the preschools have done as much, if oh, not more, more, than most oh, preschools in K-1. Yeah, K -1. yeah they've done the most, I think. Which I think is the right thing to do to continue to foster this interconnectedness right. because, the, you know, they will have, that's their classmates. They've established that now. That's that those right. are their right. friends, and this yeah. is, it's great. And they come right in the preschool room and head right to their favorite centers, blogs, mm -hmm. paints. I mean, they just, looks just like they're yeah. yeah, that's, that's great. great. Fun. All right. Uh, any other questions for uh, Lindy and Bonnie? Nope. Um, all right. You Thank you. Thank you so much for, for for a report that's all positive. And <laughs> we try. Yeah. Excellent. Um, you're up. All right. Budget. All right. So just to put the disclaimer out, <laughs> I am only a month in. I did not create this budget. <laughs> Um, Marilyn has been phenomenal and she has been the person taking care of all of the budgets for the supervisory union for this year um, and she's done a really great job and she's worked extra hard on them. Um, this most recent budget draft that we submitted had the adjusted revenues from your audit. So that was the one that was sent out on Saturday, and I apologize that you weren't. I just cut and paste the really email from the one that went to Bruce. I was the one that Bruce. was complaining about not having Yeah, so I'm not sure how it. I missed you on that. I apologize. Um, I don't have distribution list for each of the boards set up in my <laughs> Gmail account No, yet. I was the one that complained about <laughs> it. I didn't get any problem with that. 
so that's the difference. The change you see there is what key weight and what it cost for next year's fifth and sixth graders. So the go. fifth and sixth graders are going this year. Right. right. They will not go next year, which means that. But they've heard that gr that they group is already gone. gone. So they were right. already gone. And so, so they don't. So the idea get is you go once yeah. over the course of two yep. years. Uh, and I don't know about Rochester, but that's the way Stockbridge has done it right. in the past, as every other year. Right. And we had not because we were single grade right. levels. Yeah. Um, and one of the things we're trying to support too is a better understanding of what's available. Uh, closer locally yeah. right mm -hmm. in our own state Absolutely. what are things that kids aren't particularly familiar with right here in Vermont and there's certainly a reason to go to Boston there's a reason to do things like that but there's also a reason to better understand your own state what's happening here what's happening okay um, so then if you actually go down on the cuts there is this same line item lower mm -hmm. for two thousand um, dollars that we took out oh sorry You're yeah that's grant funding um, that we received for well winter wellness and so like this is grant we, funding well that two thousand dollars will we will get towards our winter wellness program from grant funding from okay so you pull it so we pulled two thousand out right. from the taxpayers because it doesn't show up on our revenue uh, side um, not not completely not we're, not. we're anticipating an extra two thousand dollars of to grant money and we won't know till to offset that, but it do, does not show up on our revenues right now. Okay. So if the grant money didn't show up, the event wouldn't happen? Or we'd find it someplace else. And okay. we checked before we did that, they're, they're, they're fairly certain that that grant money is stable. We're, we haven't put all of the grant money that they think we're going to get, we haven't budgeted all in right. this budget. We've left some okay. uncommitted in case that happens, Carl. If it comes in a little less. Right, right. No, I just, I mean, I guess. I mean, it seems like philosophically we change every few years in terms of we do. do we put all the grant revenue, you know, on the on the or put all the grant income on the revenue side so we can show that you know we're supporting a, a, a more robust program than what we're charging the taxpayers for, mm -hmm. and that really tax dollars are a smaller percentage of the total expenditure on our kids, uh, or you know, then it seems other times we say no, let's just show we you know, maybe we want to show a lower budget. Or, but the philosoph the, the the philosophy seems to change in the business office of, of saying we're not going to to show these these you know off tax revenue sources and not show the programs they support either. You know, so that the taxpayers are only looking at something that talks about the things they're paying for. And so it seems like we're in one of those years where we seem to be I mean, are we doing that consistently and not showing not showing the majority of our grant income and, and not showing the majority of our grant expenditures? I, I wouldn't say so. Again, you know, I haven't been here through too many budget cycles, but I would not say that's the case. I think, uh, let me answer it this way. I think grant coordinators typically get a sense of how much, for example, title money, which is our big grant, is coming into this, right. to the district. And typically the, the folks who send the money will say, we're anticipating a 8% reduction, we're anticipating a 12% reduction. Most grant coordinators take the bad news into the budget process. Okay, they're telling us 12, we're going to budget for 12% less. Typically it ends up being 8% less or something 6% less. So they, they, they give sort of their best guess and then we take that money and figure out how we can reduce local funds by the amount we're fairly certain we're going to receive. The 2240-3240, yeah. um, which is the STAR 360, mm -hmm. um, was something found out there that was a revelation? Uh, Mary Ellen negotiated an SUI contract, S or um, excuse me, school district wide contract. Okay. So both of us together. Awesome. She realized that we were not getting a good rate on that. So we have that in writing, like this is what it's going to cost. Great. Yeah. Um, that's a huge difference. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, okay, I think the next is the whole technology section. So that is um, $24.90. Got it. Um, so it looks like, um, I noticed in the notes there was a reduction in the amount of Chromebooks potentially to be purchased. Um, and 
a couple questions was, you know, how many do we currently have that are like one years old? How many do we currently have that are two years old? How many do we, like, how many do we want to have in our buildings? Just a little more information about that. And then also I was wondering, um, the amount that was chosen, where did the number come from for that was the cost of each Chromebook? That's not a hard quote. From somebody, okay. From, from, well, I have from, uh, the I, I don't want to say Google, but from the supplier. Right, because yeah. these are Chromebooks that were purchased in May of last year, and they're two hundred and twenty dollars each. So, if they're that price, we are, could actually buy thirty-five Chromebooks for seven thousand. Which so. is interesting because that is not the price that we just paid recently. Okay. In Stockbridge, higher than that. It is a year ago, but right. um, I thought that was kind of interesting. So. Yeah. Just, it, but that's the plan is that you would try to it, it reduce right. the amount of Chromebooks that you're going to buy. I think ideally we'd like to get one to one at least for fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. Fourth, mm -hmm. fifth, and sixth. And grade. I would say in Rochester we're probably almost there, but some of the machines are four to five years old. Right. At a certain we're, point we need to. We're trying to. We're trying to bond in those Stockbridge up. we're one to. We are one to one. Uh, four through six right now. The reason we could reduce that is based on numbers. We need uh, five new ones to meet the need of the right grade book, uh, number of students per grade level uh, because we just replaced. So ones that the third and fourth graders will have are two years old. So we're just, and right. then Rotate. fifth and sixth graders have one. So brand new this year. So, so are we trying to put um, Chromebooks into to third and second graders' hands as well? or? you were saying that the third graders have? Um, so somewhat, because of somewhat. standardized testing, like yep. they will take a test on the computer, so it's important that it's a device that works. Yep. Right, yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> SX, and then uh, our teacher does typing programs. Nice. Like that's kind of just different things I wouldn't say all the time, but definitely being familiar with it and knowing how to use it safely. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely very important. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, Okay, I don't didn't really have a lot of questions with technology. I could I was able to see where the you know the reductions and everything it mm -hmm. seems reasonable. Um, twenty six ten four twenty, which is the, that cleaning services. Oh, and so I just was wondering because the last draft it was sixty five hundred. And it looks like only 4,200 came out. Right. So where'd the rest of it go? And what we, I think we were kind of wondering what that cleaning service was anyway. It, it actually was a typo. It was contracted services. <laughs> contracted. Not, not cleaning services. OK. Um, I remember that. And I'm sorry? <laughs> you remember that? Do you remember that? It was like one of the first couple days I was here. OK. <laughs> So well, I got a surprise too when I read it, and I thought we have a cleaning service. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. No. <laughs> so did the, so the balance of so that thirty two third uh, the twenty three hundred went into what line item, Amy? I'm sorry, I lost. Okay, it one is four twenty. Four twenty. It's out of, it's out of order on the, the budget. It's gotcha. the last it's item of the, the, the count. Yeah. Yeah. What we did is we just looked very very carefully to see if there's some things we could defer. I, I'm going to be honest. The the we didn't make a lot of cuts, but most cuts in the buildings facilities are basically things we can try and defer. Um, there wasn't a lot of cushion budgeting in the first place. There weren't any numbers that were sort of rounded up. Yeah. She does a really close job trying to budget, and we just looked at some things that we said, okay, maybe we can wait a year to do that. Um, so that typically... I typically won't Nervous. be doing that. We won't be doing that in our budgets too many years in a row because that gets us in a whole down I see road. it. I'm sorry. I didn't even see it down there because it's out of it was out of numbers. Out of order. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Um, okay. Twenty six ten dash four thirty one. That's our um, potential like bleachers and multipurpose room tile and. So the bleachers are this ridiculously expensive to remove. Right. So we're just going to keep one side closed. Yeah. Um, that was one of the costs. The tile piece, I think we're just going to wait and see what comes so back from this study. Like, right. So this 55 room is just kind of like in there as like, so you have it for. Right. There's other there's stuff. There's going to be stuff that, that we're going to need to replace. Exactly. Okay. There wasn't anything specific. Is that sort of a line item that you kind of see as what's reserved with. 
from the study priorities that that will take? Um, some of it. Some, some of it will just be general maintenance, like mm -hmm. in, in, you'll have to replace lights yeah. or you'll have to replace those things. One of the things that, uh, that very informally, and I don't want to quote the engineers at all, but I just asked him a simple question about if we're on site and we're doing work, do you think that would take the cost down of taking this set of wages out? Because as Lindy said, it's ridiculously expensive. Right. And his comment was, it certainly makes sense that it could. You've already got the guys on site. You're probably going to have materials that you need to remove it with the on site. You've got the contractor probably on site, so you can probably get lesser cost uh, when we're actually doing some work. For right now, it's not a safety issue because we keep them locked shut and nobody can open them. Yeah. Okay. Um, 2670-108, that's the crossing guard? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, the, the reason we recommended that, or put that in this list, is that we're having uh, more and more limited use. We have three or four sixth graders and a fourth grader who sometimes use it in the afternoon. Uh, we don't, at this point, hardly ever have any child who uses it unassisted in the morning. There are parents who walk their children down from the village, but there, there are not hardly, there's hardly anyone who walks down on a company of kiddos. It is a question, is it worth taking it out for that amount? Do we want to leave it in? But it's basically had far more use when we, seventh and eighth grade were here, because those were more the kids who walked on. Um, we're down to just a couple of youngsters a day, and for many days it will go, many days in a row, nobody crosses. Uh, it's very short term, it's 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the afternoon. <clears throat> the reason we have that amount there is that, you know, nobody's going to give up their entire day in 15 minute blocks to make $9 an hour. They're just not going to do that. Yeah. So, um, that is what that represents. Okay. Um, oh, it, is that, that's this? That is 2670 with no, with no dash on it? Is, is no. this the yeah. number? Is it in there? This is what it, this is what it costs for the crossing guard. Okay, so yeah. it's not, it, it's, it's not, not being there. recommended yeah, okay. for next year. Um, it's one of the cuts we made. Right, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm confused while we're looking at that block. I mean, you, you see it's function 2670 safety, and then it's got an object 593 SU assessment. Yeah, that yeah. was yeah, confusing. It, it kind of goes the... It is confusing. It's this. But the SU assessment is 2711. Okay, so that's what's missing. Is that okay, it's, 27, it's, it's, 27, it's missing. that's missing. On the, on the, on the sheet, it doesn't, it doesn't label that that's a separate... That's a separate function. So yes, uh, SU assessment for transportation is 2711 for a function code. Okay, okay so we'll need to get the 2670 safety having a whatever, a sub I can't under change the pivot table <laughs> underneath <laughs> it. It's locked. So yes, I will let. But Marilyn could change that before we actually printed the end. Well, that's what I'm saying right. for yeah. printing purposes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that absolutely. Is, that's confusing. <laughs> yeah. Crossing. I know. <laughs> I know there really isn't. No. Hmm. Vermont has their own crosswalk guidelines, believe it or not. 
And they're quite extensive because I tried to locate one in Millbury. And it was one of like, them, it's mm. supposed to include a certain number of pedestrians per hour. Right. But it's kind of the chicken and the egg. Like, you might not have that, like, that number if there's no crosswalk. But yeah. if it's a school use, then. See, that's the other thing they told me. They may come and say, you can't have right. a crosswalk here. I mean, I just don't know how it all works. But we might as well might start as well the journey and find out. Yeah, because it does make sense as long as there's no cross guard. Yeah. Just to have some kind of signal yeah. to let people know to slow down. And uh, I learned that the only way they can be ticketed during that time, this is why I, the guy like showed up, like, you need to sign this. And I was like, oh, I don't even know what you're talking about. But um, because they can't, they could ticket someone, but someone could appeal the ticket if it hasn't been signed off of and not updated. Oh, like okay. Very hmm. Which is good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, something to kind of keep in our minds. I'll make that, that call to the department. Say, uh, thank I can you. See what we find out. Yeah, she needs to send me that contact. Um, you guys happy with the budget? I have questions. Good. From what I've seen in the last five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Go ahead. just generic. I'm sorry. The 2610, the total operation of buildings has gone up 8% from the 19 budget. And I um, wonder how we're going to defend that to the public. I think they're going to have an issue with that. Yeah, I, I, some of the numbers I have to tell you, I'm, I'm, I've worked very hard to try and change some of those numbers. Right. I, I mean, don't, I know it, it is what it is, I but. And I just don't have the answers for why we can't change some of these numbers. For example, why the electric bills are going down. And yeah. I don't have this background to explain it all, but what folks keep telling me is that our computer switch is over there, our telephone routing system is over there. There's a lot of things over there that require energy, even though the building shut down, the lights aren't on. Um, and that's, I'm hoping that the, uh, the engineers seem quite, um, what's the word I want to use? They were surprised when they looked at the amount of energy that was being used in that building. And they felt there was some things we could do fairly quickly to bring that number down fairly significantly. Awesome. Um, they would walk around and point to things and, and you know, I have no idea what they were telling me, but it certainly made sense to them. Did it sound like those are easy fixes? Or would a lot of them did. A lot of them did, Jenny. They were looking like they were they were lifting something up, and they were saying, "Look, no, no vapor, no insulation up here. It needs to be six inches thicker, and it would pay back." And I mean, are there any years. things that aren't going to cost much that we could implement? I don't. Quickly? I don't really know, but I'm hoping when we get the recommendations back, we can figure that out. They did believe. They did feel that there were a number of places where they could look outside. There's a number of leak, the air leak mm -hmm. kinds of places. Um, some of the windows, they had some questions of how well these windows are serving us. Um, so I think when we get their report back, we'll have a better handle on how to move forward with some of this stuff. Um, but right now, it's a mystery to me. Because I will be honest, I thought when we turned the heat down, shut the lights off, and just went to zone one, that we would see a drop. And the temperature went from what to what? How much did it, it drop? Went, it, it never was much above 70, 68. It'd go up to 70 on really cold days, and we dropped it down to 55. And I asked a couple of people, and they said we really shouldn't go much lower than 55, or we'd start causing yeah. ourselves problems. It seems like that. I mean, it's not a huge difference, yeah. but it, it seems like that. It would just do didn't. Something. I don't know why. It just didn't. I I just I wish I could. I wish I had a better answer. Um, all I can say in the buildings and grounds piece is we've gone through every number line by line by line, <coughs> and put it back as far sure. as we. <laughs> feel that we're comfortable putting it back. One of the things, it's a small amount, but these certain things bother me is our, is our waste removal. Uh, hasn't gone down one penny since the high school. Right, they're still charging There's the no amount. competition. It is what it is. It seems like a lot to me, but yeah. I can't mm -hmm. find anybody else to come and pick up the waste. And so I have asked um, Tara if we could do an RFP to see if by chance we would get someone who could uh, possibly bid and provide a little competition, but that will be for next year. And I don't dare reduce this much in case we're left with the same provider. That's really not nice, is it? <laughs> no, it's not, <laughs> not nice at all. Such a monopoly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really not nice. So can we put it out to our pay? Is it can yes? Good. Yeah, we can put it out to bid. Well just Good. just a matter of what I've been told is there's only one person that ever bids on Rochester. No one else ever expresses an interest. I don't know if 
you just have, I know yours is less, but I don't know if you had any competitive nature or not. I don't know. Okay. So the food services, um, why aren't we including that 40K into that number that we're thinking that it will be on this part of the conversation, maybe? I think we are going to include it. It's a, right, it is right. an option, it's an option for, for you. you. Okay. It wasn't included originally, but based on the deficit, the historical deficit, the original budget did include it. So Marilyn was recommending that you put in that amount of money. Right. Uh, that additional amount of money. That additional so forty. Because right now, the, right now, it's got like fifteen yeah. grand or sixteen. Right. Grand, 15, so the forty-one one, the forty thousand one thirty-three, bring it up to fifty-six thousand. And adding that in will make us over the threshold. No, will not. No, we'll still be under. Your th after adding it in, your threshold number would be, Bonnie. I wrote it on your piece of paper, eighteen thousand fifty-four dollars. I think it, it was be. after we take away your exemptions. Oh, you wrote it in this one. Yeah, it will be. So after we add it, it will be. Um, oh, and I have it on here too, Dad. Eighteen thousand five hundred twenty-six dollars and fourteen cents per pupil. Then we get to subtract out their costs. You get to subtract out that do not uh, count toward the cap. So we get to subtract out uh, $407.36 plus $64. So that would be what, $471.36? Or then the $792? No. $7.90? No, $407.36 and $64. Okay. We would subtract that from the 18526 And that takes us to a per pupil cost of $18,000. Fifty-four dollars and seventy-eight cents. Eighteen fifty-four seventy-eight. Seventy-eight. So that's even less than what the budget is before we add that back in. So is it because we're adding that in that we get the those extra reductions? Sarah? I get the calculator out. Can't do math in my hand. <clears throat> What's our enrollment at Stockbridge this year? What's our enrollment in Rochester this year? As of today, we have 93 at Rochester. Are you counting? Preschool. Or preschool? Yes. Sorry, I'm that's what I'm counting everybody. Ah, uh, ours is 54. And they've both gone up since the beginning of the school year. A little they? bit. I want to bet. Tip it, tip it up a little bit. A couple of them. I'm just, I guess I, 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 I'm i surprised that our food deficit is so high. That's like 300 some dollars a kid. What, um, we, what we find looking at our side is that our revenue from the food service program basically pays for all the supplies and food and paper goods and all that. It covers that with a slight amount left over. It doesn't begin to cover salaries and benefits. It's that there's so few youngsters, and a good number of our youngsters bring home lunch. We do have some kiddos that we feel would qualify for free and reduced lunch, but parents, sometimes pride gets in the way, and they're like, I'm not feeling that sure, out. I sure, I get, my I, I, I get that. Um, and then we just have very little economy of scale that we can, we can do much with. Lindy and I are interested in looking at bulk buying and stuff like that, that will help us a little bit. So their salary, is that included in that number or is that somewhere different? No, the food, the food service has to, the, the food service is, is its own separate like business unit. There's a whole, it's, it's, it's whole you know, separate it, it, it does, whole separate so all the, all the personnel costs, the insurance costs, the supply costs, it's all everything like together. that is, is all lumped together in like a, in like a non-educational sort yeah. of account. And then we just have to make that whole, but I'm just surprised that you know, fifty six thousand dollars is, is is a lot of overage for you know one hundred and forty seven kids. Um, Part of that essentially goes into paying their salary, though, right? It right. seems like much, right? Yeah, the bulk of it. Right. Last.
last year it was we it was subsidized fifty or this current year we subsidized fifty five. Right. It was twenty four thousand for Stockbridge and thirty one thousand in Rochester. Right. So your per pupil spending prior to per pupil spending, yeah. Prior to being able to take away those things. Yeah. Is eighteen five twenty six fourteen. After we can take away those, it brings it down to that 1805478. Okay, so my question is in the um, th chart that you gave us that bef before we add in that extra subsidy, the per people spending is 18303 Yeah. So we cannot take that 18303 get... because you're under the threshold. You still get those deductions, but it doesn't impact you because you're already under the threshold. Yeah, but it still lowers. Yeah, the so if you took the 18303 and then you drop down the 407.36 and the $64. So we are we can still take those yes. on that 18. Yes. And okay. By the ed formula, you never have to count principal interest or contributions toward the whole in teacher retirement. You see that $64 down there? Right. Yeah. Uh, that goes to the retirement. We chatted with the board at our last meeting about how you have to pay a charge for every new teacher you hire in the first, right. the first five years. Right. Okay, right. that's what that's the amount that we can take out per pupil for that. Oh, okay, that's our credit kind of. Yeah, right. so these are, that's a good way okay. to think of it. These are two credits. You can subtract them out. They do not count towards your per pupil cost that puts you up near the or, or, or cal when calculating the cap. Okay. Um, so wouldn't that bring us down to dollar sixty one pre CLA? If we if you take that eighteen three oh three ten and then you minus four oh seven thirty six and minus sixty four. Well you gotta start with eighteen five twenty six fourteen. I'm, t I'm asking. She's doing it prior to. Oh, asking, I got you. Sorry, Amy. Sorry. Well, just because I'm, I'm confused as to why my number is higher right. when I, before I add in a forty thousand more dollars. So when we go eighteen three oh three ten, and then take out the four oh seven thirty six and the sixty four. Yeah. What do you which get? Which would get seventeen eight thirty one seventy four, and then you divide that by the yield. Let me see my phone. And then, well, that gives us a um, dollar sixty-seven before we take the tap, take our six cents off. So now if we take our six cents, dollar sixty-one pre-CLA. If I look at this sheet here, does that show that the 1830310 already has that amount minus? No, no, it doesn't. It's because no, no, no. number 13 is that amount, and then 1421 minuses it out, but. It didn't in the calculation, right? Twenty four. Yeah, because the, the she has that eight. The threshold is what is in there for line item twenty two. Right. Excess spending threshold is at eighteen three eleven. Mm hmm. And then per pu per pupil figure used for calculating district equalized tax rate is at eighteen three oh three ten, which is the same as thirteen up above. Right. And you have fourteen and twenty one that you're supposed to minus out of that, right? I don't know why that didn't. Okay, so it sh it, it should do that. Let's see. Okay, good. <laughs> Well, I'm so not confirming that. Oh, okay. I'm not, not saying that. Not saying that. That's yet. Not yeah. Why are you thinking that 24 should be lower? Because I'm thinking that's that. what I'm thinking. If yeah. if you go with the same theory that is here, that if we add it back in, yeah.
would still give us if we go with adding this back in which i think I mean, we, we, we probably are going to need to yeah. oh, we're going to need to add that back in Otherwise, anyway it just looks like we're being shady <laughs> right but that would give us a pre-cla of a dollar well, 63. yeah it does <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah it, it it really isn't an option i mean we know yeah. it's an expense but that's that's we, we have to we have to yeah. Yeah. We, we have to okay. right well, and again, that brings us to a pre-CLA uh, with the food service added back in, the food service subsidy of 40,133. Uh, it gives us a pre-CLA of $1.63. pre-CLA. Compare to the dollar sixty-five six. So I and think it's still under the that's still under the threshold. Yeah, the threshold yeah. was 18,311. and we would be at 18 and 54. So definitely, I think we should go ahead. Now our add. budget assumes we're essentially drawing down our carryover to zero. Is that correct? Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. So as we're on that, that I'm, I'm not suggesting we don't do that, but we do have to know that. It's good practice to carry some sort right, of a that's what I was just wondering. fund balance to take care of unanticipated. Yeah. Well, but. yeah. So our balance carry forward for on um, uh, our budget of 2019 is what was carried that came from our 2017 budget, correct? Uh, F correct. FY17 budget. Okay. So this that we're putting in now. Is the audited amount from 18? It's the Rochester and Stockbridge combined audited amount from yeah. 18, and which is on your revenue sheet. It's yep. two, what 236. Yeah, 236. 236. Okay. Um, those are both some pretty big fund balance. Fund. So that's something we need to remember. We're looking at a tax rate that's going down. We're looking at a per pupil cost. We have to remember that. So when we're starting next year's budget, if we don't have that same kind of a healthy surplus, right. that's going to automatically increase our spending levels because we're basically paying it down by almost a quarter of a million dollars. Right. But on the other hand, our budget shouldn't have a quarter million dollar cushion in it either. We, we really should if be we, getting these. Once yeah. we're kind of getting this exactly. better groove, our budget which is why I have the audit, because what yeah. any administrator should be able to do, if we have a surplus like that, we should be able to explain to the board why we have that surplus. Yeah. And we just haven't had the audit in time for right, that today, like you guys, so we need to go through it. And figure and then, out why. And then explain to you and the taxpayers, where did this surplus come from? And I think that I'm anticipating, given that the high school was downsizing, there were some things that were budgeted for yeah. that never came to be. Yeah. And that's where we're going to see some of these surpluses. I don't know that for certain, but that would just make sense. That, right, know. well, Stockbridge also had a, a big surplus as well. They Actually, really Stockbridge's this year was pretty small. Oh, okay. Shoot that theory. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but just just so the board would know this, Lindy and I, Lindy and I both believe this. Um, when you have a large surplus, you need to be able to explain it to the board just as much as you need to be able to explain a, de a significant de deficit. Sometimes significant deficits and significant surpluses are really beyond anyone's control. A whole lot of youngsters move in that you hadn't anticipated and you need yeah. to hire a new teacher. That would be a great problem to have. You need mm -hmm. to hire a new teacher, et cetera, but that would show up as a significant deficit. Yeah. Yeah. On the flip side, you budget for something that doesn't happen. Um, you're able to reduce your staff by two teachers. Uh, that is going to result in a significant surplus. So. Lindy and I need to go through the audits and we want to be able to explain where this money mm -hmm. comes from. Right. But I will say the board, I, I really would ask the board to grapple with this notion of how do we want to start establishing the fund balance because it's really not prudent to not have any sort of yeah. money on hand for right. unanticipated uh, events. Absolutely. Right, and then uh, besides that we had also, when we set up this, I had created funds for like a tuition fund in case we ended up with an influx of tuition kids and some of this money sh would be nice to start funding those accounts. Absolutely. I'll just backtrack a little bit. Carl asked what our, um, yeah. uh, what our student population, our number was. 
Um, and the, I remember that the board at a previous meeting had asked me to look at the uh, Rochester, Hancock, and Granville numbers. So at the point I looked at this, uh, we had 92 youngsters uh, on site, one youngster off site. 63 were from Rochester, 20 were from Hancock, 9 were from Granville. Hmm. And we were, we. Uh, just a question on the budget. Sure. Um, simple one. I noticed you have an audit and um, never in here from last year, but no audit expense for this year. It's budgeted here now. What's the number? The audit expense, um, it used to be budgeted for at the local level, at the school level, and now it's budgeted for at the supervisory union level. Right, we, have, so we have a new contract that the, the, the uh, auditors are giving the SU1 price, and so our share of the audit is now rolled into our SU assessment. Okay, mm -hmm. You're welcome. One question I see the public potentially asking is what efficiencies we're making as we merge. Last year we combined music teachers. How are we working towards anything, not necessarily combined, but making things more efficient? I don't know at this point we have any one significant. I mean, we're in the process of looking at a number of things, trash removal, bulk buying for food service. None of those are reflected in this budget as actually happening already. Um, but we're sort of looking for those opportunities. Definitely field trips, right? Because we are doing field trips together, and that's an efficiency. Yeah, that, that does save some. That does save some. Pieces. Some. I'd be hesitant to call field trips <laughs> an efficiency. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I was just we don't have a learning curve for that high school. But I think we have concentrated this year on on the social emotional. I think we have socially, but I'm thinking budgetarily, they'll right. probably be asking. Mm -hmm. I think the next thing that Lindy and I could explore, and I think it's after this, you know, we get some of this engineering stuff back, but um, a number of schools have gone like some uh, folks put a. Um, an attorney on retainer. They do the same thing with plumbers, electricians, and you get a better rate when they come to work on your hot water heater, your bank of lights that went out, your whatever. Um, whether we're large enough to do that, I don't know, but those are things that we need to start exploring. Is that a way to save some money if we both use the same whatever? Um, I know Tara, when she gets her feet on the ground, is going to be looking more for us to do bulk buying of certain things that we're not doing at this point. So. It's stuff that hasn't been done <coughs> since Donna. Right. Great. Excellent. One of the so things we learned. One of the things we learned here that we can tell people. Well, one of the things we learned is we're not going to do any more yes. bidding in in the papers. We're going to go to these bid sites that are online. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> oh, man. Everyone looks there now. <laughs> you had to get in for us. <laughs> so it's looking into those rates. Is that something that we can tell people that? That we definitely that we're actually that we're actually, that we're actually looking that we're, that we're looking in into them now whether it pans out that it ends up saving us any money or not is the next question but we need to look into those things and it would seem like it would turn into some it levels of does. efficiency yeah. well, by, yeah. um, <clears throat> question on this sheet um, the uh, CLA and tax rate <clears throat> for last year for FY19. Um, those numbers don't correspond to what we have in our book for CLA or for the tax rate um, in, in 19. 19, FY19 for the historical. Um, I have that Rochester's CLA was. 114.25 and Stockbridge's was 104.47. Um, this is information in our, that we printed last year. So Rochester was 114.5 and Stockbridge's was wow, 114.25. And Stockbridge's was 104.47. And then the actual tax rate. Um, that was printed in this book, and uh, you, you might want to just m maybe review this page in the book to correspond it to, uh, but it, I can tell you what the, t the tax rate, uh, Rochester's was a dollar point four nine four eight, and Stockbridge's was a dollar point six three four seven. And at that point, we were dealing with the 5% um, cap 
that we couldn't, the tax rate couldn't swing 5% up or down, uh, which benefited in both of us. Uh, and I don't know, I don't think we'll be in that, that same situation this year. No. And then they also kind of have a question how these tax rates actually go over to the tax bills and, and the years of the tax bills because, um, you know, if I look at my 1819 tax rate on my tax bill, the homestead tax is not the same that we printed in this book. Wasn't there an error? Isn't there something that says an There's error a, in a 19? There's a note on here that said end spending differs from annual town report due to error in FY19. So if the end spending is so incorrect, that's got to change our, well, the, but I mean the tax rate between here is a dollar point forty nine. The tax rate on my tax bill is a dollar forty. I mean that's nine cents. That may have been where the error was, though. There was some note here that we don't completely okay. understand. Well, I'd like to explore that a little bit more well, with I somebody. Think we, I think we should explore it. I didn't hear the whole thing. with your tax bill lower or higher? Than lower than what we printed. Oh, okay. Your tax bill was lower than what we printed. The education, the, the homestead education tax rate was lower on my actual bill than what was printed. And that's 1.40 on the bill? Uh, 1.4071. I don't know. I don't have Stockbridge. You know, maybe you could take a look at your Stockbridge, Bill. I just actually, I mean, you know, I mean, well, I mean, here, well, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just here we are getting this tax rate down, and we're talking about pennies on the tax rate, and then when I pick up my tax bill, and it's not matching what what we're trying to accomplish here. It concerns me, and I'm kind of wondering, yeah. you know, I might just be missing a piece, you know, that, it, that there's another calculation that goes in there or something, and I just... The grand list. It's something to do with the grand list. Well, isn't that the CL? No, no. no. The, C, the, CLA okay, the, grand, is a, the CLA is a calculation that the state of Vermont does, um, of which the grand list and property values are a part. Okay. So once but we... But it can change. Exactly. Up to Texas. June 30th. Oh, to June 3rd. So, so the tax rate, the education spending tax, the homestead education tax rate that we are potentially setting right now actually goes through another calculation with the grand list. Should, it shouldn't be nine cents. It should That seems suspicious. Okay. That seems really, really high. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Amy, let, let me ask you this. What did you say Rochester CLA was last year? What was printed in the book yeah. was 114.25. Right, and that's what's on the state website, 114.25 okay. for Rochester CLA. And 104.47, good. So what was printed so, in this book for... And that's as of August 14th, 2018. So that would be correct. Is what this says. Yeah, that would be the, that would be the final number. Right. Yeah, that would be the good number. August 14th, 2018. 2000, so that was 2018's number. We have a new number for 2019 Which, for now. Which, you say your, your bill was? Sorry, $1.40, right? For what, the actual tax rate? Yeah. Uh, $1.4071. That's what they show. That's what they're showing. So if I plug That's in. That's what they're showing if you plug in what? To the spreadsheet. Your 114.25 for your CLA in Rochester. Yeah. It brings your tax rate after CLA to 1.4071. Which is exactly what you said. Stockbridge is 104.47. That would bring their tax rate after CLA down to 1.5388. Okay, so this is off of our budget last year. The budget number from last year. What I just what, what put in is what you, you just gave me for numbers. On to, uh, from what, what on 
when I plug it into this section of the chart where it says 100% okay. and 90% right yes. now. Yes, okay, you just switched that because that's linked to our our 19 budget, basically. Yes, so I just right. updated it there, manually overrode it there, and I come up with your tax rate that was on Perfect. your tax bill. Um, so that makes the increase larger. <laughs> oh, that's not good. <laughs> um, so what does well, it what does la it come up with for last year's um, uh, per pupil spending? Your last year's per pupil spending on this spreadsheet. Yeah, that gives you is the seventeen two forty seven sixty seven two forty seven sixty seven. And this year, prior to adding in food service, is that eighteen three zero three ten? Right. Okay. A difference of a thousand fifty five dollars and forty two cents. Yes. Here's a piece we have to remember too. We're automatically going up two cents by the reduction right, right. in yep. the in the unification and cents. Right, but that that's that, that, that comes that, that comes in later, that comes down in line twenty six. Right, right, right. right, but it's still a reduction of, of those two cents. I agree, Carl, not in here, but I've I've lost it, you're gonna have to get it back for me like that. Um, okay. Uh, the number that we printed was seventeen thousand six hundred forty-four dollars, not seventeen thousand two hundred and forty-seven dollars. So I just want to be. Let's make sure we have our numbers really nice before we print. Okay. And I think right. what we're well, then before we probably let's let's make sure we all our numbers are flown flowing in the right place and that the budget still. you know it still still ends up where we think it's right. Right. Up. right. Well, it seems like we still have two things we need to know. Add in that food service number, and then you had talked about not draining the carryover down to zero and how that would impact what our number is. Yeah, I, I think at this point, I mean, I'm kind of hesitant a little bit here, but I think at this point, this budget has been calculated using all that carryover. And it's probably late in the game to change that. But I think as the board, you need to talk about what directions do we want to give Tara in another year? Do we want her to start by putting 80% of a carryover that's so offset. Do we want a director in the first draft to put all hundred of it in? Or I okay. think we just have to. The board just has to grapple with which way are you most comfortable starting to develop a fund balance. But if we add in that forty k, <coughs> we still have a cushion. Wouldn't it be a good idea to keep a little bit of that cushion? It might be the year you d you decide to do that. Right. Well, I mean, I think understanding. I mean. The, 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 the way you, you build a carryover into a budget, at least the way I've always thought about it, is you know you do that by estimating most things kind of you know you, you don't try to say, well we can you know let's 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 shave this down to the to, to, to the absolute minimum. Let's still leave in you know let, let's let's leave that fifty five thousand dollars in, 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 in building general repair. We think that's a, a pretty good catch-all number, and hopefully we don't spend all of that. And so that's how you know, you get a you, you can you can get a surplus. Right. And you can all. I mean, I think by law that 236 or whatever the carryover is yeah. in the in the audit has to be returned to the taxpayers either by being applied as a surplus to the budget right off the top, so that we're starting with our first quarter million paid. Um, so do you usually reset that number to zero each year? So typical. Yeah, uh, or you or you say that you so say you that okay, we've got this two hundred thirty-six thousand dollars. Let's do what we did a couple of years ago in Stockbridge and say let's put some aside for. We know that there's going to be work coming to the roof and we're we're getting right. quotes on the right. new furnace. So let's take some of that and then you add then you add an item to the warning. It says will the voters approve? No. Put adding fifty thousand so dollars to the use building. So you carry over and then put the cushion into your budget so like next year you, you have, have to do something with it if the board right. acts to do nothing with it as Carl says yeah. then it automatically returns to the taxpayers to reduce the budget if you wanted to start a type of a fund balance or a contingency as Carl said then you have to ask for voter yeah. approval to do that and you have to establish the reserve funds like in Chelsea when I was on the board we had a building reserve fund right and we established yeah. every year yeah. we, we have we have some, we have some reserve funds, reserve funds that we that we fund from but time to time at the beginning of your budget season is that's when you talk about it uh, mm -hmm. for, before you even start to build the budget we say okay any if we have a surplus we want to take 20% of it and put it into these funds let's see what we can and this year I mean your audits were extremely extremely late audits are usually done in the fall yeah yeah and we so, weren't the only SU that didn't get their audits I mean they the audit 
auditors ex reached out and explained that it was all the way across the board that they were behind. And you know that's no excuse, but generally speaking, you have your audited financials, right. and then you you have a better idea, so you're not you know shooting darts right. in the dark. Okay. One right. of the things that Tara is going to be dealing with is a couple of fairly large firms who did a lot of work in school audits mm -hmm. have ceased to work in school audits anymore. So there yeah. is a shortage of there auditors is. who will come in and audit small amount. Right, of and that was actually one of the reasons why we we went to the you know. Uh, some of the other boards in the SU were kind of more hesitant towards the idea of having a, a group contract because they were afraid that they wouldn't get the right amount of attention uh, uh, from the auditors. But the auditors basically, uh, I think, told us more or less straight out that you know we want we're not going to sign individual contracts with Rochester and Stockbridge and you know Tunbridge and and, and Stratford. We want to sign one. You know, we that, that 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 for everyone so that the auditors only come into the area once. They go through all the books at the SU office, and, and, and then they bang out the individual audits. Um, and moving forward, there will be less audits because we want to have right. all these different right. schools. Back to the uh, fund balance issue, though, another, another thing just to share with the board. There are some districts that actually budget line item contingencies. So they will have a line in their budget that says, building maintenance contingency, or some break it down, electrical contingency, plumbing contingency. I think we're kind of small to, to, to break it down, but that is another way that they begin to plan for contingencies. The other thing that you will hear Lindy and I tell you is that we shouldn't have uh, too large of a fund balance because then we're holding monies that really should be returned to the taxpayers. I don't know if they're still doing it, but six or seven years ago, building managers used to recommend about 5% of your budget be held in a fund balance. Anything above that started to look too much like mm -hmm. we're holding on to taxpayer money that really should be returned. Right. Right. And the, the other piece is, you know, when you think about, um, you know, are you budgeting uh, too close to the too close to the bone and risking a deficit? It's important to understand that the board can, um, without going to the taxpayers, the board can can take it take it. If we let's say you know the, the the roof failed or something, and we went, you know, we we had a half million dollar or a quarter million dollar deficit because of unexpected uh, circumstances, that deficit can automatic the, the the board can without talking to the taxpayers just break that deficit deficit out over three years. So there is, you know, there, there there is the ability to, and I'm not I'm not advocating that we should run a deficit and then, you know, <laughs> just just pass that Pretty along good. for three years, but it is something to to, to, to to be thinking about in terms of, you know, as we we, we try to walk that line between, um, you know, bal balancing a budget, having you know not too big of a surplus or, you know, not too small of a deficit. The other thing I will add to what Carl said is that. Um, Administrators have this ethical principle. Somebody told me it's in statute somewhere. I've never seen it. I think it's just an ethical principle that as soon as you become aware of the fact that you are potentially going to have a deficit, administrators, one of the ethics of being a school administrator is that you start that day taking every step you can to keep the deficit as small as possible. So basically you go forward and you don't purchase anything that isn't essential once you know or once you believe you're going to have a deficit because your obligation is not to spend all the money that the town allows you to spend while this deficit's building up, but it is to maintain that deficit in as small a number as you can, because the taxpayers are going to have to make it up in the next next budget. What sort of reserve funds do we have right now? Um, we do have some. We, we do. Have. We have some in, 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 in both towns. I don't know. They would be in this, in this audit. I don't know what they're the, What we are. have is um, a reserve fund uh, to be used to fund in whole. actual dollars. Do we cap. Have? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no I think oh, that's a good question. No. And the building I had one at one point, didn't we? The no, building. I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know how our funds, you have a building fund and we have an, a general two. education fund. Right. So, yes, we do. So, have those two. have money in it. Those right. are two funds yeah. that have money in it that are. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they, 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 you, you can the, the the board can draw them down as long as they draw them down for whatever the purpose they were reserved for. Right. Um, okay. So one is a building fund, and one's a general education fund, which you could 
there's more reasons you could draw that mm -hmm. one down. Building fund needs to be drawn down for building maintenance. Right. Right. Or yeah. Can I ask a question? This trust fund slash trustee of public funds dropped significantly in the proposed revenue. I know what the nine thousand dollars is. That's the contribution from Stockbridge, but is there other monies that have come in in the past? Like that's a pretty big mm -hmm. drop. Yeah. What was the yes? Uh, Rochester in the past has gotten. Um, uh, funds from the trustees of public funds <laughs> and maybe Barb would like to uh, uh, just talk a little bit to us. I guess it's probably a combination of whether the, how the funds would be handled versus one school versus another and there's this discussion about are the funds supposedly more for the Rochester people the way it's written or it could be broadened out to be students of joint schools and so last year when things were pretty much in a flux we did you know when it was coming we gave it we, uh, the 44 before things happened but as a last year as things were still happening we were pretty much elected to let, let well first of all not that much money but secondly uh, just to elect to see how things work out and what our true obligations are in handling those funds and so that's really the bottom line from one point of view we, we get more bang for our bucks from contributing to the school because the school taxes are two thirds more or two thirds of the total tax bill as opposed to the one third of the towns. But then you get the sticky wicket of okay, we, which people are we serving? We're serving the taxpayers on one hand, and we're better just give it to all the schools, but I think you might have a little bit of an issue with that. So yeah. that's now, where we are. How are the one of the things we, we weren't able to get a handle on because you weren't at our last meeting. <laughs> Um, how are the the funds? I mean, in, in Stockbridge, there's one of the one of the public funds is specifically for uh, 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 schools, yeah. and the way that the, the way that that's been traditionally handled in Stockbridge is the trustees, you know, have, have usually uh, uh, you know figured out what their return is and what they what they they, they, they can give out of that and, and, and do. Now, is the is that the same methodology that's used here, or is that the, are there are there funds that are the purview of the school? The school well, just you take have them? funds that are purview of the school. You have two funds. Now, the, I mean, Kirkpatrick and the Wing, which we've talked about before. That's under your direction, totally. And then we have the funds that are town funds, which is what this forty-four thousand came from. Oh, okay. So technically, the trustees of public funds don't administer, are not supposed to administer your school funds. And I think in the past, what we did was we would help the school by combining the investments with the bank because we could get a lower rate because of the combined uh, total. I think this is something that I think just Debbie and I were talking about and we've talked about before, is how are those two funds legitimately, you fellows were looking into your to your legal aspects of can those two funds be as a combined fund of source of income from both schools or can it only be restricted to the Rochester? And I think the last time I talked to you guys or I was at your meeting, I think we decided you had to look and get a legal opinion. Right, right, and that's, and, 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 and we did, uh, according to Bruce, he talked with our uh, um, attorney uh, around the same time that they were settling the issues around the property, the, the, the property issues and, and that because the, the budget serves, um, the, the, the budget serves, uh, you know, the, the, the combined students and because the amounts of money are somewhat proportionate in terms of, you know, there's like 10,000 that comes from the, or 9,000 that comes from the Stockford side. And, you know, we've got, and in, in the past, it had been more from the Rochester side, but there were more students from the Rochester yeah, side. Yeah. And, the, okay, and the, the, the idea that it could be shown that there are more than $9,000 of benefits going to Stockbridge based kids. So because the money is never really directly allocated where, you know, this is all put. You know, nine thousand dollars is put into the Stockbridge Food Fund or wherever. Whatever, yeah. uh, the, the big, the big thing is that they, they said that because the community that it serves includes the stakeholders for those for those funds, and it's not there. There, there's not any way to look at it. It's you know, it's a four million dollar budget, and we're talking about you know one percent of it or so in the in the or, or, or two percent in the total amount of of, of So what did they say? Did they say we could we could do it. That's why we have the nine thousand from Stockbridge in there. Because we were to, we were told that it would not, Jeff, or at least per Bruce, um, huh. you know, uh, I've not seen a per written Bruce, piece of paper from the what attorney. What you're saying is that the ownership remains with each school. Correct. The uh, income from it can be right, the, to the joint schools. Right, right, because it serves it serves okay. kids from both places, and there's it's 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 not a such a large proportion yeah. that it would, it would it would seem like one town was subsidizing 
the you know both schools or, or students well, I think from that's, both that's schools. That's the kind of reading you need in order to decide how to handle your funds. Um, the other side of the coin is how you invest your funds, and I think that's um, something else that should go back to. Uh, we've had meetings about that too with the school board or the treasurer or the principal, depending how it's worded, because there's money in the Rochester that's just handled by the principal and not by the trust, not by the both school school board. Um, any case. Uh, it's just another consideration that we now as trustees have pretty much always tried to say this is a school decision, a school policy, and all we were doing was helping out, putting it as a coming of the flower. Right. So, so, the, you need so the amount that was given in this line item of trustees and public funds was actually town yes, funds. Right. Town's trust. It was not one the Kirkpatrick or the Wayne. That's right. Interesting. That's okay. Right. And I, I, I know it doesn't address the, um, the sort of the emotional issues of mergers, mm -hmm. but for the last 10 or 12 years, Vermont's education fund has been a blended fund. It, uh, it used to be that you take your tax bill to the, to the town treasurer and they would put it in a town account, and that account would be used to pay for the town schools. What happens now is all of our tax money is sent to Montpelier. Yeah. There is no such thing as Rochester tax money, Stockbridge tax money. It all goes to Montpelier. It's divided up by formula and a portion of it, some of us are receiving towns, so we get back more than we send. Others of us are not receiving towns, like Killington, Stowe, those places that tend to have big property values. They are sending towns, so they send more money to Montpelier than they get back. So there's actually language in Act 46, the merger law, that talks about how you can look at these funds. But fundamentally, it's impossible now to say, I only want this to go to Rochester kiddos, or I only want this to go to Stockbridge kiddos. Um, I guess the exception would be physical things like buildings. Right. Okay, You could actually take money and pay for a roof on this school, um, because there is no funding for those kind of projects anymore from the state. You, you, you bond for that completely. But in terms of having funds committed just to youngsters from one campus or the other, it's no longer possible under Vermont's funding law to do that. I would suggest that next year, because this year is already budgeted for 2020, it might be a good idea for somebody in school to come in to our trustee meetings and discuss your position, which then will help us make a decision of how we distribute the funds. Great, and the trustees that everything is said and done for town meeting for the town budget? Yeah. Okay, so when do you guys? We can pretty much make the, the decisions in, let's say, December. So, so December, December. So November, December. And November, how long? December, come. Yeah. And when do you? Go ahead. Um, you could, do you meet once a month, twice a month? No, no we meet really quarterly or on demand. Um, okay. Like we set up a meeting for if somebody who wants to have money for something. Right. Right. <coughs> can we come and talk to you? So okay. We don't have a set. Just like a big stuff. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. All right. Do we have uh, any more questions? And do we feel like we're comfortable enough with what we've seen to, 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 to move this forward tonight? Or do we want to um, have, a, we have another meeting? Do we know what the number is with that 40K to bring that in? If you Tara has that. Yeah. It goes to it goes from the uh, eighteen three oh three to eighteen five twenty five fourteen. Yeah. And but then you minus out the stuff to eighteen. But based on what I'm seeing, we that's the number that we have to put in the warning. Is that eighteen five twenty six fourteen? Okay. And we have to state that that's above the cap then? I just, that's what I was just doing all of this when I was digging back through what number was actually used in all of this. And even last year, it wasn't, the number that was used was that 17,247,67, up, rounded up to 17,248. So I don't, I shot Marilyn an email, but she hasn't responded. For which? No, our warning is seven, For your per pupil, well, our warning is 17,644. Well, I'm assuming that was probably before the error. I mean, all I have is this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it's our warning. So, yes. Well, but that would make sense because the 18, 526, 14, that is 
our education spending per equalized pupil. It is. Then we get to take the cap calculations. Okay. Then we so get to a, subtract out. So, yeah. So I so still that think would, you have so to that would make sense. 18, 5, 26, 14 as your per pupil spending. Right. And if I'm wrong, Should then answer. we will adjust the warning at the day of the meeting like we did for yeah, a but that, other but that would make but that would make sense because it doesn't it doesn't yeah, clarify that is the spending. yeah it doesn't say right. education spending for equalized pupil okay. after blah 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 it just says education spending for equalized pupil and that's what we're spending is 18 5 26 14 right so then we go on to do the cap calculation which is why you're subtracting out those numbers that would make sense so then the budget number would be four million four hundred twenty six thousand three hundred and forty four dollars. Would you read one more time, please? Yep. Four four two six three four four. Now what that does to our tax rate is brings Rochester up um, eight cents, which is higher than five percent, so we can't go there, so it has to be seven cents, right? And same with Stockbridge, it's a ten cent increase, which you can't go more than five percent, which is what we ended up with last year as a five percent cap on the tax rate. Can't go five percent higher or lower, right? I'm kind of asking. You're saying we go up or down more than five? You go, we go up more than 5%, but we, we really wouldn't times 5%. It's 5% of Stockbridge's, um, and then the question is it post-CLA or pre-CLA where that 5% comes in, or maybe it doesn't matter. Um, I can't remember if it's post or pre. And with Stockbridge's uh, FY19 tax rate of a dollar fifty three eight. It can only go up point zero seven six nine. So seven cents. Seven cents, and what it would be at with the new rate would be a um, dollar sixty two, which is higher than seven cents. So we would benefit from the cap again, is what I'm guess I'm saying. Which is nice. Right, because so we'd we we'd, we'd be essentially saying because of the cap we can we can push we can push the food service dollars in there, not go over the, the, the excess spending threshold, mm -hmm. but the tax rate can't rise enough to match that. So we'll be able to take advantage of, of keeping our taxes down. It's a five percent increase, of the, yeah. The, the, the merger cap. Mm -hmm. So it'd only be a it'd be a five percent increase in in homestead tax. Right. So would we would we reflect that in the uh, in well, Article Seven of the warning, where we say we because by law we have to say what the percentage of increase is. Well, um, we said in last year we benefited from so the five percent cap, and in does that bring us kind of into the hole when we start next year when we do Can the I tax? Read your warning from last year because I don't know any of this, so sure. that would be super helpful. <laughs> I, uh, I was going to bring extra copies of that. Yeah, have three or four of them at home. Right, because we will reach a point where we no longer benefit from that 5%. When Correct. does that happen? Yeah, I'm not sure. That's what the. Well, it's 2% each year. Check the yeah. average. What are we says. at next? 6%? Or yeah, 6 so this is not specializing, it's specifying that it's subject to the cap. It's saying you had 7.7 .7 higher in Rochester and 7.6 higher in Stockbridge. And right now, combined, the, per, the projected spending per equalized pupil is 7.412% higher than spending for the current year when I did out my math using the new number. Okay. So I don't but think in our warning, warning there doesn't talk anything about of the 5% cap. No, it's not referencing right. the cap at all. So we were over last year over the 5%? Yeah, because you were at 7.7 .7 and 7.6. We, we weren't over the cap so for, for pupil spending. Right, it's just right. over the 5%. Over the, the, that they let us so not did, did, jump yeah. taxes that much yeah. because of merging. But if there is a uh, progression that we that of this five percent and this year is different than last year. Out. We need to, we need to uh, right. figure that out um, because your point's a good one, Jenny. We're sort of we're sort of getting year we're two percent exactly. Yeah, over. so we're sort of getting things 
we're not getting them for free. We're paying right. for them, but in terms of the cap, we're getting them for free, and that's going to catch us at some point. Right, but I'm all, my only hope is that this is we, we, this is only our second budget together. We're only right. part yeah, way, I most of the way through our first year together. Yeah. So. I think by next year we'll have learned a lot, we'll know a lot more, we'll have audited numbers, and we'll really be able to, you know. I mean, and it goes down to four cents next year, right? The exact right. merger. Yep. Yeah. So you're going to lose another two cents there. Right. Right. But I don't yep. think there's a lot we could do, you know, because this no, is all so new. About that. Um, we just don't have the historical data to do really anything different. And really what we're doing is we're building a lot of tools that would make next year's budget both easier and more transparent yeah. because we're, we're trying to, Tara I know especially is trying to create history from a couple of folks ago. Yeah, that's and great. You finally yeah. reach a point where you say, you know what, this is not a productive use of time. Right. You just have to agree on a set and move forward. And that, that's kind of where we're at right now in the business office as I've been working through this, particularly in the last two weeks. And we are you know, coming up with the request for current budgets for the current year and where we're at. We found that there's a lot of things in the software that aren't coded the way that they need to be coded. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to find out, does it make sense to take the time to go back and recode everything? Or to start fresh for the, once all of right. these budgets for the 1920 term are approved, just rebuilding the system for the current year. Yeah. So we're going back with Tyler Technologies back and forth about what's going to be the best course because then we also have the change that's coming down from the state AOE for the chart of accounts. Right. So we have to change all of our codes anyways yeah. to make they're them happy once they figure out what the chart of accounts are going to be. And, 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 and we, need, we need to have that line to be able to trace it back to at least something for those first couple of years. Yeah, so, so that's what we're trying to establish yeah. within the business office right now. What is going to be the best course of action yeah. to build that? So that's still why your expenditure reports and revenue reports look funny because they kind of dump things in like special accounts and in some situations they've dumped all expenses to one building versus breaking it up for building so it's really it, there's been a lot of confusion with and that's what you get when you have four different people yeah. doing things yeah. so um, you know I I was forewarned and I anticipated finding stuff like that when I came well I definitely appreciate all the work that you've put into this Absolutely. and you have provided yeah. me with information that I is really valuable and and a an, an more in-depth look than I've been able to have before so thank you I really appreciate it can I have another question? Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah, um, I guess you're gonna be you're gonna be looking at the new draft audits and then these um here in this sheet does not reflect the new um the, your um your your carryover, right? Your fund balance. So these top numbers are going to change? No. No, the top number on the budget worksheet that was issued that two hundred and thirty six thousand dollars is the audited okay. fund balance yes. that we corrected and made that to move forward for this budget draft. Right. And, and, the, and the next question when you go down to your comparisons, you yeah. had you had some I I, I may be confused about this. I am confused about it. When you come down to your comparisons, you're gonna dollar forty put that for Rochester and FY nineteen, what was that one for something? A dollar four oh seven one, yeah. So then that number replaces the one point six oh? Yes. Okay, and the same thing in the next column, all right? Dollar fifty three eight. And dollar fifty. Okay. So then when you go forward when you want to look at your, your change and your tax rate depending on your, all these other calculations, at this point I guess it shows um, a considerable in, well, an increase as opposed to a decrease. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> well, the, the difference FY19 and FY20 is actually comparing the primary tax rate prior to CLA. Okay. So it, it's, it didn't change that part of it. Oh, that's what that little table right there where it says difference FY19, FY20 of 0 0.1315 for Rochester and 0 0.0664, that's driven by a formula that's deducting the tax rate prior to CLA FY20, which with the revised number for food service is 1.7571. Well, when it, the heading says FY20 CLA and tax rate, so it's implied to me that this, that the rate that you showed below included the CLA adjustment. Maybe I'm reading the heading wrong. No, that's what it says. 
Yeah, the top box. Right. Well, I'm just using this. Yeah. Well, I guess what I'm looking for is a comparison after you finish your calculations on what the increase is in your tax rate compared to the year before. Which goes back to your 5% in the first one. Right. Um, and I'm not suggesting this isn't all <clears throat> important work that we do, but I think your point, Barbara, is a good one. Most people, when we're done, I think will want to know, what was my tax rate in my tax bill last year? Yeah. What is my right. tax rate in my yeah. tax bill yeah. this year? Right. And, and not so much not so much why in terms of all the calculations. Yeah. Yeah. If it's gone yeah. up, tell me what's right. made it go up. And yeah. if it's exactly. gone down, tell me what's made yeah. it go down. Right. And how, I think that's it. You know, and I, I do. I think they're gonna vote on it. They're not just gonna look at that. Right, your tax rate went, went up by this, this amount, and this Here's is what we've done. This is why. Mm -hmm. what is so, I mean, based on the revised number. Yep. With the CLA as it stands right now at the 110.3 yep. versus the 114.25, the difference for Rochester is that 0 0.1315. 1315. And the difference for Stockbridge is 0.1519 right over that 1.4071 and 1.5388 where are you reading that that is the revised tax rates after cla when you gave me the revised cla numbers yeah, say, th say those numbers again rochester is at 1.4071 yeah, okay. stockbridge is 1.5388 okay And when we when we fully when we fully pay for uh, the food service deficit as recommended, you're saying it's go it's going up 13 cents in in uh, Rochester and 15 cents in Stockbridge. Yes. That's more than that. Five percent. Why would it be that? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that that's nice. I got that the Rochester would be a dollar forty eight oh two and Stockbridge a dollar sixty two six as the new CLA tax rate. Maybe it's just best if everybody takes some time and kind of figure it out because it is kind of complicated. And when you have your to determine what your budget well, right. regardless, is going to be, it's all related. Regardless of the budget I, I think we've w looked at the budget and is there any more questions on the budget because we, we we've determined that, that percentage is. Yeah, well, he, yeah. this is one of the things I'm going to suggest. I think in fairness, we need to give Tara some time to figure this right. out because she's trying to work with yep. other people's yep. numbers. That's what I'm saying. If we, I think I'm saying the same thing Amy said, is there anything in the, but I'm not saying accept the budget at, right now. I'm saying we is there anything in the have, budget? I'm actually going to do a special meeting. But we could call a special board meeting in yep. a couple of days. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. You have to yeah. do a special meeting. Right. It could be a very quick board. meeting that just basically yep. Yep. says, here's the impact of the budget yep. that you accepted. Mm -hmm. Right. right. So no, the, on, the only other questions that I still, and I'm assuming that, that you know, the, if we went from $96,700 in uh, building operations. Uh, what uh, could salary, you number so, number? What numbers? I'm sorry, uh, 2610 um, operation of building. We do the, the same thing we were looking at last time, which is the supervisor salary went from basically 90, 93 7 to 60, uh, 66 1, and salary general went from 3,000 to uh, basically 39,000 or 38,9. Um, but when, okay, and I understand that things need to be rearranged, which account or which function code things are held in, but where the, you know, it seems like we went up nearly $9,000. In, 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 in building uh, maintenance salaries, do we hire extra people? We did not hire extra people. I do think uh, Marilyn and I, I believe, had a conversation that there was a deficit there in terms of the salaries. This is actually three. What is this? What is Eleven thousand dollars. Yeah. So there's like one, two, three, four. So there's four people. You have one custodian, right? So there's one, two, three. So there's four people in that. Hundred thousand dollars, fourteen, ten, under four thousand dollars. So, um, 
I, I, I can't answer completely, Carl, why the numbers were different, but I do know that we checked those salaries and those are the accurate salaries for those four people. Okay, so then is the, the information shown in last year's budget, was that just wrong? That's what we don't know for okay, sure. Okay, because it would be good to have that the answer for that. And then I know we had asked, and I didn't. I have not yet seen the the, the, the breakdown of, of our where we're sending kids and those tuitions. Oh, uh, I had that. I oh, thought I sent that you that. Oh, yeah. Did I? Okay. So hold on, I'm confused as to your question that you just asked. So under 2610, supervisor salary. Right. Mm -hmm. It went from 93,658 last year to 66,149 this year, uh, whereas line 108 salary general went from $3,000 last year to 38,911 this what year. What page are you on? I'm on uh, the bat left to page 2610. Well, it's, it's, it's up 11,000 dollars, 11, and, and part of that we believe, and this is what we were hoping to be able to substantiate completely, I think the 93,658 number uh, may not have been an accurate number. Six, fifty. See that 93,658? Mm -hmm. the I guess what, what confuses me is that, you know, if you look down, health insurance went from 23.2 to 23.1, which would kind of look like the, you know, health, I mean, the cost of health insurance went up like 12%. So the fact that actually the dollars went down would almost make it look like we lost a person. Which, which could happen. Someone right. could change their coverage change, right, decided right. they couldn't right. continue but then, to pay it. Then to, on the other hand, to go up in salary over 10%. It, it, it's, it feels like there's something that, that, that needs to get sorted yeah, in that so part of the budget. I mean, I, I have found the backup to substantiate that 93.658. And how many people are in there? Two. two. And then, so go to the 66.149. Is it the same two people in that? You mean? For this year's budget? What, what Which do one? We have? Same line item, but this year. You went down yeah. for yours. <clears throat> and down substantially for yours. Yeah, see I think I think from what I I can see the line item okay. on we, the tab. We reduced for, we reduced by one position, so I can see why ours went down substantially. Should have been a whole salary. Ours went down. It for. looks to be that way. To and me. benefits down nineteen to twenty. Uh, well, it probably went down. No, fiscal year nineteen. To 20. Yes, yes. <laughs> sorry. So in in this current year, which is FY nineteen, right now we reduced a custodial position when we merged. Okay. So that's why ours went down. Mm -hmm. Have they entered? Yours shouldn't have gone up. I might have the tuitions for all my kids. I think you did hand it out last year. I can't find it. I don't. I think I did those. I think he only had one copy of it. He oh, left he with it. Around. I think he just oh, passed it around okay. and left with it. <laughs> Do you actually see any of this in Star Yeah, no, totally. <laughs> Can you want people over your shoulders and look at the name she's seeing to see what you can figure this out? Mm -hmm. Of how many kids are going to right. I saw that. I must have passed it around. I don't have 
Yeah, I think he passed. Yeah, yeah I agree. I we remember saw seeing it. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, it's so. Um, does it make sense? It does. So the. So 261105 includes both, um, like, custodial leaders in both buildings. So two physicians. Two supervisors. Two supervisors. Ours is 0.6 in Stockton, and Rochester has a one point out. And then 1108, right, that was the other one you were asking, 261108, includes the two part-time people here at Rochester, they come in, and then the work, that, the money they get paid for the summer work. Okay, and summer work. Is what the... Okay, but again, so why did it go up 11%? If it's the same people... Yeah. That part I don't, I do. Yeah, because you're always getting away with the raise it back to I'm not that bad of a union negotiator. That part I don't know, I just... That's the breakdown that was given off right. of who was where. Yeah, and so again, I don't uh, really have again, I'm, to I'm just going to say that I know Tara's trying to recreate work. I'm not trying sure. to... Sure. No, I, I'm, I'm just trying yeah. to, you know, yeah. no. I, I thought what we're doing is yeah, trying yeah. to say, here are the, the areas we still want answers on. Exactly. So we can have the, you know, we, we can get the, the, the final document, right. have a special meeting, and bang it out. And neither am I, neither am I trying to have Wendy and I, you know, sidestep responsibility, but we get the salary figures and benefits from the central office, so we're going to have to give Tara time to just right. dig on deal with that, that figure. So much. Right. But that list, should, pull that question list one, because it's, this is just for Stockbridge? Correct. We have it for Rochester. So this is, right. um, the Tara right. no, edited in the version of my computer. Yeah, no, no, the big thing is just, uh, did, did, do we know, we, we really nailed down as, 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 as accurately as we can that, you know, we're, we're going to whatever this total number is. Yes, we've confirmed the residence of every kiddo. The okay. We've confirmed the school they plan to attend. The only projections are the sixth graders because at the time we were putting this together, and, and actually still now, most sixth graders have not confirmed mm -hmm. their school. We think we know where they're going, families think they know where they're going, they're starting visits, etc. cetera. Okay. But we had to make a guess for the sixth graders. Where, right, what number on. is the... Um, the tuition is uh, 111, or I'm sorry, uh, 1100 rather. 1100. And it's uh, it's broken into two lines now, mm -hmm. uh, 561 and 563. Okay. Thank and you. Total, I know what you're looking at. Number 568 is the president of the state of Vermont, Davis. Remember that? that? Mm -hmm. Right. And then there's and then the, 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 there's the income that comes into. No, no. They say you don't have to. We pay for a significant amount of, of tuition to Botex centers. And then they turn around and say to the towns, and you have to raise this money so that we can tell you we're paying subsidizing tuition. Uh -huh. Right. So we get out of that. Uh, I mean, we get forty-three thousand back for that um, forty-three thousand. I mean, it's a, it's a, usually it's a wash. Yeah. Yeah. We raise it, send it to them, they send it back to us. <laughs> right. It's the only the only thing that's weird is that it doesn't match up to kids because it's a six it's a yeah, six it's semester a six rolling semester average. Roll, yeah, rolling average. Um, but we basically, what, so minus, do, do we go up or, or down in terms of like kids we're tuitioning out? Went up to 1266. Right, but I mean, do we, do the, do the number of kids oh. go up or down, do we know? I don't know that, Carl, because I don't know how many we tuitioned last year with any certainty. I saw a list and nobody verified it and I, I couldn't answer that question. Next year we'll answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was trying to figure out, I mean, we went up 50 it some grand. Gone up. <laughs> yeah, like three be. kids or so. So I can certainly find that out for you. How many were okay. tuitioning? Yeah, just 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 the uh, you know just so we were able to say okay, we're spending fifty some thousand dollars more than we did. You know, represents X number of kids. Right. strike us that we would get these questions answered and call a quick meeting so that we can get I think that's a, I find think that's a number. The, the, the way to do it. I feel a lot more comfortable knowing, you know, that we've seen, you know, we, we, we've confirmed, we understand about the 5% cap and we, uh, uh, in terms of tax rate rising, we've confirmed that we know, you know, 
just because we, I mean, what worries me, we looked at our warning from last year and said, oh, well, we said we put these numbers in this way. Um, you know, the people that put that together last year made a lot of uh, uh, interesting choices in the way that they put things together. Mm -hmm. So I want I want nice us to make sure that, that we are saying the right things on the yeah. warning that we're supposed to say it's by law. Yeah. And Great. that we're, 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 you know, saying things the way we do. Like one of the things that's new and I've never seen before on the warning is the, the point about uh, to fix the salaries of the school district office officers for the next year. We've never warned that before. It's in the budget. And, you know, so. I don't know why that's, it happened in all the schools this year. I curl, so maybe, I'm assuming a change in. Dina wrote these warnings. So right. she, so I don't know if it's a statute law. That's what I would like to, I would like to know. Because Where? she, it came, this all came from her. that warning? Okay. In the packet. Yeah. And it may, I, it I, may I, indeed be a statute because we had to do it in our board for the first time over in Rome with these with the. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, and that's, uh, if, if that is a new law, let's, you know, th th then that's fine. Um, you know, I just want us to make sure that. Where, I mean, anything that's not consistent is the things that people exactly. are going to ask about. They're yep. going to say, well, you always said, told us this this way. Right. You know, and why are you saying it now? Why is it changing? Mm -hmm. And the other piece, why did we make it a non-binding advisory article Thank you. for changing the uh, meeting date? Right, because it should, we have to... I mean, we want we want it we want it yeah well, we I mean, need it we, to, we can't just have it floating in the air for next year yeah I mean we need to say we need to think about and we can we can figure this out we need to think about what day we'd like it to be yeah right and say right. because it should be a binding article that says right that should be an article 9 should be a binding article that says should the annual meeting of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District be moved to and put the date a date yeah. you know move third to the, 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 the third the, the, the fourth exactly. Tuesday of, 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 of April instead of the fourth Tuesday of May exactly because I, I think that will that'll open Was that? Yeah, you don't want to leave it open ended. Right, well, you, you can't. I think you have to warn it to a, a, a fixed right. date. But I think that if we tried to say, oh, yeah, hey, you guys, do you like coming in May? People would say, <laughs> we didn't like it last time. You yeah. like it less this time, that even less that you didn't change it. So. Okay. Well, are we discussing that right now? Um, I think let's, 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 when does school calendars, I mean, is there, no. do we know when? How does the, 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 the April break get set? Um, that, there's a right? draft right now. I can tell you that um, don't don't pick the 13th yeah. of April, the third Tuesday of April. I would go the fourth Tuesday of April. If you're yeah. looking to do April. I think that's a good idea. Because yeah, that's not what you would change. It hasn't been adopted yet. Because right. it hasn't gone this through year, the proper the channel. Beginning. But we do right. want to try to avoid it right. being on a but, vacation yeah. Yeah. time. Right. You know, so it, is it ever, does it? Does the April break ever go to the last week of April? No. Um, March. How much? Hold on. Um, there is talk because calendars are being aligned. Uh, are we being in February? <laughs> I'm not going to weigh in. I'm not, not going to weigh in. Is the way I'm going to put that. Um, of aligning and moving it to a different week. Block. Give me a second. What well, is there a problem doing the first week in May, like the first Tuesday in May? Yes. But, um, well, there's too much else going on. But, um, I think having having these meetings closer to town meeting. Um, is better. People are more likely to want to come to the meetings. Like yeah. some schools do it the Saturday before town meeting. Some are doing it the night before town meeting. Well, we the do. Portion We're a Monday night. We are a Monday night. Well, there's a lot of night. benefits that we get by waiting exactly. to get yeah. we whole get real numbers. numbers, real numbers for the tuition, and what else? The tuitions for payment. Health insurance increases. The health insurance increases. Okay. That's a big. You know your seat. You know oh, your. Oh, you get CRA your health insurance increases in gym. October. Right, well, and that's going to be that some of the, them, but not all the time. Sometimes okay. they're much later. We get the CLAs later. You'll have your. Um, Quite frankly, in the past, part of the thing with 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 Stockbridge was always that, um, you know, the the business office was much more interested in, in uh, the, the the bigger schools. You know, and then so we. I don't discriminate. <laughs> <laughs> She's from a small town. But, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, certainly we could we could look at. Uh, I mean, the first week of April yeah. might be a possibility. Yeah, because I don't think we'd ever have vacation the first week in April. Would we? No. 
now. Something you run into is Easter. Next year is an Easter. But Easter would not be on a Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. There's never, there's never really. There's never really. Push back. This is the first week. It's not Holy Tuesday. But is it better to have it? Yeah, but Easter is not the twenty-first this year. Do we need? I personally think it's better, and I understand. But I personally think it's better to build the budget on real numbers than numbers we're thinking we're going to get. So we, we get our CLAs and our equalized pupils, which are critical. You can't calculate a tax rate without those two things. Um, we got them like a few couple weeks ago. We didn't get them much and before And the yield that. hasn't been confirmed yet. Well, the yield will never be confirmed till the end of the session. Yeah. They, and I then, mean, they put out Well, they're budget. redoing the ADM, so that number is going to change exactly. in the next. So is the, is the first week in April, will, will the information that we need be in, or should we make it later? I think some of it will be. I mean, I think the AOE, once they get this year, is an exception to the rule, is my understanding. Why the AOE is so far behind and everything was because of all of the new stuff, and they're down like 40 something staff members. So, all of the stuff that normally is issued in December we didn't get has been like February and March this year. I mean, I certainly think the first week in April probably heightens the probability that we'll have that information. So let's do it then. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it gets it closer, but it gives us, I mean, the big thing is, is moving it, you know, A, having it closer to town meeting, but also having the ability to, if, the, if you know, the taxpayers say no, to we don't like what you're doing, mm -hmm. you've got time to, right. to, 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 yeah. to rejigger it and to, to address. Right. Where now, the second really okay. yeah. When did Start Start time to four out out there? We had always been uh, the first Tuesday in May. Oh, we were that late. But that's but that's when tuitions weren't coming out. I mean, we okay. historically were then because tuitions weren't coming out till like end of February, and so we wanted to be able to, you know, with sending half our you know the kids spending half of their school year going somewhere else. We right. To be yeah, active. it's really important. They're moved yeah, up when tuitions come and. You know, things are more computerized, so I think the numbers get generated better. Looks like Rochester's was the last Monday of March. So maybe do the first Tuesday of, of April. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we can we can. Ooh, that, if we do, if we tried to warn that this year, would that make next year's be on April first? <laughs> oh, maybe it would be April Fool's Day. <laughs> oh, that would be fun. <laughs> yep. Um, no, we we so we're going to get I was like, no, this is a long time ago. It'll be April 7th. It'll be actually in the, it'll be the first Tuesday. It wasn't a joke. Like the second week of April. But that's just next year. Right. You know, the year after that, it changes. I mean, if that's going to give us enough time, I mean, we want enough time. To get our numbers and to right. take well, it either needs. To, I think because of where the way April vacation seems to jump around the middle towards the end right. of the month, it either needs to be the first weekend of April or the first Tuesday of April or the first Tuesday of Not May. Until 2025, Carl. <laughs> you guys get those calendars right out there. Yeah, we'll leave that for someone else's problem then. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that would yeah, make sense. I don't know why I'm going to do that. So six, you're talking six years about an evening meeting. Yeah. So, All right. so can I just go over your questions again for me so I make sure I have them written down yep. appropriately? Mm -hmm. So do you want to know if the per pupil spending limit that we disclose on the warning needs to be the full amount or less the threshold allowances? Right. Um, I plugged in the new CLAs into this spreadsheet, which recalculated the tax rate after the CLA, which appears to match your tax bill that we can confirm. Yes. <laughs> Don't know about Stockbridge. Increasing the expenditures at $40,133. I have done that in this version of the draft, which has increased the tax rate after the CLA to the amounts that we previously discussed at 1.5386 and 1.6907. And we want to know, do we disclose that number or the capped number? Is that what that question was there? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we want to know how long the 5% cap remains in play. That was a question. Mm -hmm. And I when you're talking about disclosing, you mean on the warning? On the warning. Right, because we definitely want in our um, 
in our book to lay out what the actual tax rate is. Yeah, yeah. And right. all these. But what needs to go in the warning right. number is it that five percent or what we did last? Yeah. What whoever did it last year was the seven point yeah. blah blah blah. Okay. Okay. And then questioning on the salaries for the custodial staff. Correct. And I'm guessing if we talk about that chair and we talk about the names, we'll find they've just been juggled around into the wrong places. Right. And I don't, that's not, I mean, I don't know if that's something I can fix. Right. We may not be sure able to fix, but we can, we can fix it going forward. We have forward. the answer. Right. That, that's right. the point. Yeah. We have yeah. the yeah. reason. No, I wasn't suggesting we fix it. I just thought we'd get the answer to it right. and then make it correct yes. rolling forward. Yeah. And Anne's back tomorrow, I believe. Okay. Um, so I should be able to pull numbers. We still haven't been trained in the software yet, so I have to rely on Ann and everybody else. So. <laughs> well, isn't it the? I mean, it's the it's the old software, right? Uh, the, some is done. some is in Profund, which is the one prior to the Infinite Visions, which David and Liz put together. Right. Put together, which is the current one that we're using for budgets, is the Infinite Vision software, which is not the software that the state of Vermont selected. <laughs> To use moving forward and that timeline right now is 2020 hoping that it will get extended longer because the test groups are not finding it the new the new state software is yeah it's supposed to be junky yeah it like puts us back to like the 1980s for some of the business managers who have been doing this for a really long time yeah. have identified lots of issues with it so that's um, still and then the only other question that i had here um tara was that uh, the number of tuition kids youngsters last year We've got the number for this year. So what the tuition was for the current no, year? No, how many youngsters we tuitioned last year? No, um, excuse me, for the current year. Tuitioning out right. next year. Just to be able to that see what our have, student have population. That. How many are we tuitioning? And so we want to do a this year to next year comparison of tuition students. And we have the next number already. Lindy and I both have that from our first school, so we can give you that. Okay. And then we'll still talk to you about the situation. We'll be there bright and early. What time is your appointment meeting in the morning? It starts at 8. I don't get into 8.30. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right, because you're doing the Alice training. That's right, we are. So are we saying for next year, the second Tuesday in the morning, is that what we're saying? Well, I have to check with Dina okay. as to what you, why right. she indicated that was yeah. a non-binding okay. article, and if that can be changed to a binding article with you already identifying the date. Right. So I, I will pose that question to Dina. And did we just determine a date? We said the first Tuesday of, of, first of April. April. Okay. Okay. Um, right. now as far as when would it see so the warning has to be 30 days before the 28th so the warning would have to be by April 28th because April's a 30 day month yep. so when do we want to the 20th is the Sunday of April excuse me the what April 28th is a Sunday right so we have to do it before then okay and when is vacation April 15th. Okay. Do we want to meet on the 23rd? Is do that? Do we need that much time? Well, well we we either we could meet. I could do uh, the 11th. I could do next Thursday. I'm not here. I'm at the Visbet conference. Okay. okay. I leave Wednesday for that. My concern about the 23rd is that if we find any glitches, it doesn't leave much right. time. Okay. To so what I will do. You want to do the ninth? Is we'll do it a week from now. Once I fix all of this, and I, I shouldn't say I fix all of this. Once I have a conversation with Marilyn, because she's gone for two weeks, um, so she's doing most of this remotely. She's not in the office with me. So once I've had the conversation with her to verify the numbers that I put in tonight, per, based on our discussions, are accurate. Once we know all of that and got the final stuff that we need to do, I will email this to all of you. So if there are problems, potentially we can identify them prior to this next meeting to actually approve and finalize the budget in the warning. 
Does that right. work? Sound good? Why can't we meet next Tuesday then? You were, what, can you do the ninth? Do you think we could have this this uh, resolved I'm by the ninth? Yeah, I'm gonna have another board meeting. Sharon and uh, yeah, Stan and Stratford. Okay. Stratford is on the Tuesday. It shouldn't be a long meeting though. You might be able to do like a four o'clock meeting or four thirty, four fifteen, something like that. Because you just should be meeting. You should have already seen it. Right. It's just a formality it's at just that point. Moving it. Sure if there are right. issues, obviously. So Sharon and Stratford is at five thirty to seven thirty, and then Wednesday night I have F Bud. Oh, they end it? They put 5.30 to 7.30, huh? And then there's... They do it. There's SS there. negotiations on Monday. Oh, no. I don't go to that, but you have to have a representative there, correct? So you would be down one representative? Are you in SS negotiations? Uh, I have, I've been reading it. I have the, 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 the meetings that have been picked have pretty much landed every time on a, a day that I'm taking my kids somewhere or doing something, <laughs> but... I am. Um, I mean, we haven't even gotten ground rules, so the negotiations are really not. Are people going away over the vacation week? Is that week yes. out? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Saw the <laughs> that week's out. Uh, yeah. I haven't read the minutes yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. I knew that. So, if you wanted to shoot for Monday, I could do whatever time works what was, for you all. Oh, right. Tuesday night, I have Sharon and, and Stratford. I mean, unless you want to do three o'clock, so I can get back to Sharon for five thirty. You can't do that January three o'clock. I mean, that's You're still working. Yeah, I can't do three o'clock. Right. So that's the, the challenge. Where do you work? Well, I was gonna I say, work. are you guys all down in Sharon? <laughs> I work in Brandon, so this is a little bit closer. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what about that? What about Monday at four? Can we do that? Monday, Six? I could I can't do until. Well, six Monday and depending if Brian's but if you don't have someone that's going to support staff, I, I don't have to be at support staff. So Monday I'm fine. It's oh, let's just do a Monday, matter then. if you need let's to go Monday. to support staff that you need to be done in there by six PM. I can always roll in late. And, so, and a lot of the, the beginning meetings are all kind of Okay, that, so Monday the eighth the, the earliest the, we can do is depending <coughs> if Brian is home. Five. I could do five with Brian. On Monday, I couldn't do anything earlier than 5.30. I could do 5.30. And I just won't be here because I'm gone. I'm comfortable with Tara and Lindy. 5 30 on Monday? 5 30 okay with you on Monday? Yeah, I don't have any. I'll just do it quickly. I mean, it should. Yeah. I mean, it should literally hopefully be no more than a half hour. Right. You just got to approve it. And you guys will tell Christy to. And then she'll, she'll populate the live? calendar, which will pop in my house. calendar. So is it easy? To, it's easier for Scott to be here, isn't it then? Which it, I come from the SU office in Royal. Oh, okay. So, so whatever. So what do we? What well, it's, it's one less mountain to go over if you go to Stockbridge. Yeah, so if you guys want to go to Stockbridge, that's great. Yeah. All right. So 5:30 the 8th at Stockbridge to get the, all these final numbers and put them to bed and, and, and bless and the budget. And we'll get stuff on Friday. Excuse me. What's today, Tuesday? Carl. Yeah. I'm hoping be, I will have it to, to you uh, quicker than that. Okay. I mean, it's a matter of connecting with Bonnie right. and Andy tomorrow, yeah, connecting with Marilyn, morning, finalizing your spreadsheet. Yeah. Yeah. We would, we would, uh, we'd be yeah. warning the meeting tomorrow, probably. That's all done. Christy yeah, would issue the warning for a special meeting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, was it 72 or three days that you have to forewarn? Yeah. Otherwise, it's an emergency. Right. Special. Christy can get that right out tomorrow, though. Yeah. Morning. Yeah, I'm going to email it tomorrow. Oh, okay. So she has it on the thing to do first thing in the morning. Yeah. Special meeting with just the one item to uh, approve budget, approve, uh, approve warning. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Tara. You Thank you, Tara. Tara. All right. Um, <laughs> moving on. So that is A3 and A4. And uh, as far as policies go, given that it is uh, 20 of, 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 uh, of uh, 9, I would entertain a motion to uh, uh, table the policy uh, discussion till uh, next month. You're done with that. The 21 policies from phase 2. Don't we need to go away? Sounds good. I think that's yeah. a motion. Yeah. Megan made a motion. Okay. Okay, so we're tabling. There was some special warning on the for the those um, policies. 
So I don't know if it's has to be dealt with or not. No, you can table it. Because yeah, like, it was a special warning. Right. And we can we can that's for the that's the that's the the is not the SU's warning. This is the official warning that the Rochester Stockbridge Unified School District will consider 21 new policies at its school board meeting on April 2nd. Right. These policies are recommended by the SGO. Right. And we're, okay. we're, we're choosing to table that. Perfect. So will, Good. will we review and approve the audit at the next meeting, Is that when we do that? Yeah, because we can't, I, I, we right. can't, we just got handed that. There's a, yeah. that was, the next thing I was going to, I was going to table <laughs> was to, uh, was, was the audit. <laughs> That uh, that uh, uh, we have we have got. If we all can take a look through the audit and get together any questions we might have to, to Tara uh, in advance, so that yes, these we can. Two uh, things, right? You want that on the four eight before I hit send on Christie's email? The, uh, the audit on the eighth, or do you want to do that? No, next? Let's, let's no, do it regular, next week. Next regular. Yeah. So on the eighth, right now, I just have act to accept FY19 budget, act to finalize annual meeting warning, special meeting, FY20 budget. Do you want to go back a year? Come on. <laughs> no, we don't want to go back. We're trying to no. show you that you're not going back here. <laughs> All right. Now we do, uh, I believe, want to act to approve the uh, Efficiency Vermont Energy Efficient Grants. Yes, this can be quick. Um, you had the information at the last meeting that uh, our project qualifies for uh, Efficiency Vermont it, uh, rebates not to exceed $5,000. Um, I'm just asking for the boards uh, to take an action that we would accept the Efficiency Vermont um, grant and then Tara will uh, execute it. We have to have it signed. Uh, I think Carl well, has to sign it. Probably. Is this for the study in Mississippi? Yeah. This is for the, they will they will reimburse up to $5,000 for parts of the study I that you'll. This or is there's a separate one for a There's a separate one for each school. Not to exceed five thousand dollars in each school. Five thousand and five thousand around. Twenty five hundred. No worries, thank you. So you're right, sorry, seventy five hundred. Um Carl is, I'm not gonna ask Carl to sign this one tonight. They sent us these uh anticipating that our engineering study would get started on the normal timeline and we were a bit late. They're sending me new ones that has the correct date. Okay. But I'd like the board to take the action that they will approve the um, energy efficient, excuse me, efficiency Vermont energy energy grant. I make such a motion. I say and and authorize Carl as the board's representative to sign yes. the uh, corrected forms when they are received by the administration. And that that is exactly <laughs> what my motion is. So that's that will take care of everything. That will that take group. care of everything they want from us. Right. Okay. So we 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 decided to approve it, and we've authorized me to sign it when the when the corrected paperwork comes in. Okay. Can I have yes. to be signed by you? Right. And do you have the? I'm assuming you have the contract with Block River Design since they've been working on it. I haven't seen a contract. I yet. talked with him today. He asked who it should be addressed to because he was doing his invoice and the contract at the same time. So I did have that conversation with John today. I gave him our address to send the invoice to, and I said I will need to verify who needs to sign the contract, if it should be Bonnie and Lindy or if it should be me. Based on my conversation with Bonnie and Lindy, they would like it to be me that signs the contract. So I just need to get back to John tomorrow and let him know mm -hmm. that I will be the one to sign it. John from Black River Design. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what the number was on the top of your head? What their contract number He didn't was? give it to me. It's whatever. He's going to write it in his contract based on the proposal that was presented yeah. at that meeting that we are all were at. Yeah. You're right with it, Tara. I'm very impressed. <laughs> all right. So we have a motion on the table to uh, approve the energy, uh, uh, the efficiency of Vermont Bring, energy efficient back. grants and authorize me to sign uh, the uh, revised documents when they come in. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so we've got that done. Yeah, We've tabled the audits, so asbestos. Asbestos. Everybody's favorite. As part of our work with um, Black River Design, they, uh, Polly, who is our, uh, basically the person who's done most of the work in the buildings, has suggested um, that we put the asbestos question in the two schools to rest once and for all. Um, she has recommended a firm that put together a proposal. Um, it, if the proposal is put together in such a way that if they do up to 72 tests, 
It's $3,900 for one school. I think I gave those both to you, um, Tara. Here we go. Uh -huh. um, so at the Rochester High School, if they take up to 70 samples, it will cost $3,200. Rochester Elementary School, if they take up to 60 samples, $2,900. Stockbridge Central School, if they take up to 75 samples, $3,300. So it will be around $12,000 if they have to take all of those samples in all three buildings. Lindy and I are recommending that we do this work because it makes no sense to do this architectural study and still have asbestos questions hanging out there. Yeah. It's asbestos Absolutely. that's contained, but we need to know where it is, particularly yeah. if we move forward with any project. So if we're going to replace the flooring in a couple of classes, we need to know, are those, do those right. floor tiles contain, contain asbestos? And it sounded at the meeting, they can't themselves, Black River Design, they can't say themselves but it seemed like certified. they insinuated that there might be evidence right and as one of them said we wouldn't be recommending a firm do the inspections if we didn't think there might be reason to do it right and so, i know that i know that the both the schools well both it's schools all contained Jane. you shouldn't be it's not the kind of asbestos it's, it's, okay. it's in floor tile that are contained there may but be some still, it shouldn't let get it out well, that's the that's finding the finding out what it is, and yeah. sometimes it's better to leave it in actually. Right. And to, right. To, to as long as it's contained. Exactly, right. but I want to stress, particularly for parents who might be watching, we don't have an asbestos safety concern in our buildings at this point. No. Rochester had a big abatement project not that long ago. Yeah. Um, but there are pieces left in elbows of heating things and heating rooms, so we just might as well get the information now. No, we, 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 we definitely need We're we trying to get a whole to, picture of, of yes, what we've got exactly. going on here. So. Exactly. So I would ask the board to approve that we uh, that you accept, it's not over 15000 so we don't need to go out to bid, that you would accept a proposal from ATC, Environmental uh, Services, uh, not to exceed three, six, seven, eight, not to exceed $10,500 uh, to do an asbestos survey in the Rochester High School, Rochester Elementary School, and Stockbridge Central School. I shall move. Second. Okay. Any uh, further discussion? I know that uh, both schools, you're supposed to have a, an asbestos log. Or, we do have you know, it. And, but they're, I, I've been told that they're not necessarily completely up to snuff. The Rochester one that's over in the superintendent's office may be because nobody's got their hands on it, but we don't have a complete one here and you don't. Right. Well, we didn't, and, and you only have a semi-complete one from doing the remediation, as exactly. I understand it. Exactly. So yep. I think it's work, that, work that's, 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 that's necessary and, you know, I, I think that, you know, we thought that, that uh, if, if Black River wasn't asking us to do it, maybe we wouldn't need to do it, but now they're saying you got to do this bit, so. Right. And they've looked through both the um, building yeah. plans too, like asbestos management plan. So I don't think they make the recommendation without. Without yes. Do you have this call? Uh, no. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? No. Uh, hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. We're we're going to uh, have an understanding, of, a better understanding of our building, which is excellent. Um, the pre-K uh, okay. piece. Let me make this quick also. We have a delightful problem here on our Rochester campus. We have uh, more three-year-olds who want to attend preschool than we anticipated, which really is a great, great problem to work on. Um, initially, I, I had sent out a letter to families saying that our four-year-old program was full and we would have to use a lottery system for three-year-olds. Um, I found out that there's great support for preschool in Rochester and uh, they really want us to turn no one away, which is a great piece of information to get back. Um, so what we have, what Lauren and I are proposing, we have 13 three-year-olds at this point that we believe wow. will be attending. That would be one of our larger classes if it, if it you know, moves yeah. through. 13 so what, for three and four-year-olds? No, just 13 three-year-olds. Three right. So what we're proposing is that we don't change the hours for our four-year-olds. They would continue to come Monday through Friday the same hours they've been coming, which is 8 to 1 and 15. Um, we are proposing that we have two groups for three-year-olds. One group would attend Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from 8 to 11.30. The other group would attend Thursday and Friday from 8 to 1.15. Now, it's three days for one group, two days for another group. The two-day group is a little longer. Both groups would get the full 10 hours 
of um, preschool that Vermont law mandates for parents who wish. There'll be a little more, they'll get a little different experience. Um, what Lauren and I plan to do is after screening, sit down and look at the information we've gathered through the screening and put groups together that seem to make sense. What are the groups looking at needs, looking at ages, looking at boys and girls, et cetera, et cetera. We have asked parents to let us know if there's, they have a situation that would preclude them from doing in one session or the other and that we would try and accommodate that. Um, so that's how we're moving forward this year. Not to be discussed tonight, but at some point we will have to discuss with the board the situation this sets up for next year. Because these would be 13 three-year-olds rolling forward next year that all stay would program. be 13 four-year-olds, which means we would have space by licensing for two three-year-olds. So we may be in the, I think it's an enviable position, mm -hmm. though we have to grapple with it, of finding additional space and additional in, in instructional uh, personnel for preschool. It's what we've been hoping for, yeah. that we'd start to see a little rebound in our school right, population. Absolutely. It brings along certain challenges, but again, we don't have to deal with that. Is there a next similar year. mix in towns, Rochester, Granville, Hancock? Um, I don't understand your question, Jenny. Is it about the same proportion of Rochester versus? I don't know. I should look at Rochester. that. I, I'm not. I'm not sure of that, but I should look at that. That would be interesting. It if would we started be. to see a pattern. For, it would be great to get more yeah, of those kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah it would be. It would be very interesting. Um, so I just, uh, there's really no action needed on the part of the board. I just wanted the board to know that we were reconfiguring preschool. Great. And that our intent is to uh, turn no one away. I, I think Sounds we, I don't think great. we can turn anybody away. We've been deal talking about literacy and we need to get these kids right away and get them right into mm -hmm. to education. Absolutely. And if we want to change both our trajectory of learning and if we want to lessen the cost that it's costing us, then preschool is the place to start. You really should have it full day. Yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. Really yep. It's day. pretty close. That may be another move for us to make. Um, all right. Uh, thank you. I think that is great news. Um, uh, the current year calendar. So here I am with another snow day, makeup <laughs> day proposal. Um, Good. Well, that's what we want. <laughs> well, no school in July. No school in July. <laughs> that's the, that's the motto. Up to some of my teachers, we would be going to school on Memorial Day to make up a day. Just, <laughs> Just we're not going to do that. But that discussion we'll <laughs> came up. Um, what we're actually asking is to end school for students at the state minimum of 175 days, which would end it on June 17th. With the proposal on June 18th and 19th, both staffs work together for specific literacy training with their new yep. materials to get ready. Uh, we don't want teachers starting the summer without um, without the proper PD. And the reason June 18th, is that what you said? 18th and 19th. 18th and 19th, so two full days. Okay, 17th is the last day for kids. Right, that's what I'm propo we're proposing. Um, since everybody's really excited about it, we just want to make sure that we just yes. the right okay. way. Absolutely. Yes. And um, our teachers all work all summer. Is F and P coming in to do that training? No. 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 Are they providing any on-site training at all? Not to my at this point, I don't believe they no. are. Is, is there any way we can make up a day so they're not coming to school on Monday? That's why the Memorial Day yeah. conversation came yeah. into play. Actually, <laughs> coming to school on Monday is not half bad because it's sort of easy going. Half well, again, I think they would learn more now pulling yeah. a day right. away or than it's just no, June 17th. We just don't have any options without it yeah. being a Saturday or a Sunday or a vacation you wouldn't day. Monday or okay. a vacation day or shortening April break. or None of those, I think, would get there. Well, Typically, when schools try and do that, they don't get yeah, great yeah. turnouts. Early dismissal. Mm -hmm. no. there's a, there's so you a, can't. Yeah, I have it different. So, well, that would be the um, Silver Lake Day, I guess. You know, like field, field For graduation. Yeah. 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 We tend yeah. not to plan big things like that on the last day because it rains people, the kids miss it. Yeah. It'd be yeah. more like an ice cream social or something we can move into. Yeah. I, I just know like education on the 17th is... The last day, no matter when. No, 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 Right. It right. doesn't matter. Okay. Right. So that by doing it June seventeenth, what you're saying is it fulfills the requirement of the kids for the to be in for the school state. for the amount of days. days. Right. 175 days, barring no more. 
Um, so it is. Don't say that word. And um, there's not going to be any more. Thank you. We did that last year. And through, through, what is it, through the teachers' contracts? They're, they they're have supposed to have 177 student seven. days. Okay, so this would be a good... So this would be two additional in-service days. So you're still needing their contract. Their contract. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then it would give us additional time to... I, well, they, the more that they can collaborate and get together and... Right. and, and well, do the something. more that they can... The, I mean, I'm disappointed that it's, it's, it's not, you know, uh, trading from the... From the curriculum provider, but I'm more you know, disappointed. I think that you know the, the it we need to get we need to get that material in front of the teachers, and we need to get the teachers yeah. thinking about what they're going to do with it and how that's going to be you know in, 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 and assimilate it so that when they come back that they're they're prepared. Because I and we want everybody to have the same base. And the reason I say that is every teacher we have has great intentions, but we don't want someone interpreting how to do something mm -hmm. a different way. And then that language isn't the same. And there's a lot of things that have been identified. That we just I am I'm, we, I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend as much professional development as possible. As possible. We need it desperately. Yes. I'm <coughs> who who's going to be presenting a new program to a new staff and why isn't that curriculum company when we spent two hundred thousand dollars coming in to do it. The second part of your question, Jenny, I can't answer. I got the name out. Look at that. No, Who's wrong name. Jay? Oh, Jenny. <laughs> I can't believe it. No, she didn't. No, you did not get it out. <laughs> Mitch, I can't answer the second part of that question. Lindy and I are in the process right now of, of designing that program, at that professional development, those two days, looking for people who can um, come in and talk to our teachers about the importance of a um, explicit sequenced instructional model that isn't just I call it hold hands and kind of sing kumbaya and, and we'll learn to Bonnie, I'm going to interrupt you know, who's going to be taking these materials why isn't that company coming in and saying I, okay this is level A yeah. let's get out all the materials here that we sold you for two hundred thousand right. dollars and let's show you, not someone coming, you shouldn't have to go look for yeah. this. I that can't, should be provided. I, I can't answer that question. What I can do is make the very... I'm angry you. No, no, yeah. I know you. Yeah. I don't yeah. think you're angry. I don't yeah. hear you being angry. And I don't take it personally. Don't. Um, I at think all. what we're... What Lindy and I need to do now is we have this scenario. We have this situation. It's our obligation as principals to make the very best of it that we can and make sure that these materials are implemented well make sure that the places where we feel there are holes that we are addressing those areas so that they are um, become areas of strength in our teaching the reality is this was my observation being here what a, a little over a year is that we not only have to do professional development around these new materials that have been purchased we fundamentally have to do professional development around the most effective way to teach reading. These materials are only a tool to, to, to do the reading instruction. And we have to improve on them. But they are what we have. And we are going to be laser focused on uh, professional development that addresses not only the shortcomings in materials, because I would offer that most programs are going to have shortcomings. But even more than that, we have to fundamentally address what does reading in these two schools look like? What, how do we believe children are taught to read? How are we going to take those manuals and make sure they are implemented with fidelity while at the same time shoring up those places where even I have concerns about some of the places that, that in, in the program? But I can't answer the question about why, why Fontes and Pinnell are, are, are not doing the training. I've never, and this is my 52nd year, I've never heard of a company, never, that didn't provide a consulting staff on site when you have an implementation. Are we up to me yet? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, we can, we can, we can resolve. I do really need now to, need to get yes, this out. Jenny, you're done. We're, we past your time. <laughs> um, do we need, but, if, it's but, but let's, 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 let's interrupt you mid tirade, <laughs> and let's, uh, do we need to take any action about the calendar? I think you have to approve oh. that that's 
like there has to be a motion that that is. I make a motion that we waive the last two student days. Waive yeah. the last two student days in exchange for two teacher in service professional development. I second it. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. And we thank you very much for that. Thank it will be a tremendous. All right. Now, board comment. <laughs> Okay, so first let me say, I, I'm going to say what I said last time, the fact that, that <coughs> Bruce is taking this initiative really is the exception, guys, it's not the rule. You don't find the exception, neither is a certain time that you just don't. And so I, I just want to make a question. It. Can we invite Tara to leave? We don't know. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. do you want me for the building use policy discussion? No, because I think we can defer that to the next meeting. Okay, good. Because I can't see why you can do this. Sorry, I didn't call your yeah. yeah. uh, No, no, that's okay. I also. Do you want to take all that stuff back with me? Please. Yes. <laughs> Could everybody get a copy of the audience? Yeah, everyone got a copy. Can we grab one for Ethan? Is, you can have the Oh, okay. Let me grab one for Ethan. Oh, yeah, so a copy of everything for Ethan. I'll probably see him in the parking lot tomorrow. <laughs> that it was, yeah, it was, there were two of them stapled well, together. Well, I don't know because that's the way they came in from the auditor. Oh, okay, because it looked like, if you look at like, Yeah, it looks similar, cover. but it came in this so I don't know if the auditors duplicated it or not. Okay. That's why I gave you the full thick package. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, I assume it was sorry. a stapling error. Thanks, No, I think it was the auditor. Oh, there's a <laughs> You have two audits. Read them Read them through. Figure out where on the page 30. Yeah. Where is the Oh, wait, we have more paper exactly. for you. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> The robin on the left branch of the tree. <laughs> has only one foot. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do this quickly because it's nine o'clock, and I understand that. I, I, maybe next time I don't want to be last. <laughs> Not used to being last. Um, Lindy very nicely and graciously gave me the program to look through. Oh, I, well, uh, no, I got interrupted. Who's there? The second thing is these two. We have an incredible team here. And I am trusting them to do something about this, okay? So we really, as much professional development, whatever they say, that's really what we have to do. There is no choice for this. Mm -hmm. um, the good thing is, because of Bruce's focus, because everybody is doing the same thing, because there are finally materials, I can tell you, okay, there are finally materials, we have to make arise, but there has to be achievement. Just by the basis that we're all doing the same thing and there's going to be reading groups. I mean, there hasn't been reading groups in our schools. There hasn't been a reading program. So just by that fact, we are going to see um, pretty good, I would hope, achievement. But pretty good is not good enough here, guys. We are in bad shape. And this program, I don't know how to be professional about it. I really... It's, it not only doesn't embed the research, it goes against the research. It can cause confusion for our early learners. For example, it has here, this is how they're, they're and I'm just choosing the second one. I have three pages of notes on this program. But here's one where the picture is next to where the dog is running. No, no, you don't have a picture on the same page when a kid is just learning to read. You have that on the back, because otherwise, oh, what's running? Yeah. Oh, a dog, okay, it's a dog. And they always want to look at the picture. Yeah. 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 And then what, what the research says is when pictures are introduced to early readers, they learn a guessing That's strategy. Yeah. And if it's the dog is running, yeah. then it's going to be the dog is running, because right. that's, you know. So they, know they go they against can. the research. They say introduce, I can't even tell you, the introduction of phonics introduce oh they list look at the recognize and introduce b c d e f g h j k f what are you kidding me we have kids who've never been read to with a book who don't know what the no letters are plus the fat guys if they go by the research and and i'm totally with bonnie on phonics in a set i'm totally sounding out words but there are according to research Ten sounds that, if you're taught them, will generalize to over 353 sound words, 4,554 sound words, and 21,650 sound words. And they're not this. It's not this. This is just an offhanded way of 
doing it. And then I have a question. How are they placed in these level readers? Is there a test for each level to see if the kids are passing? Because I don't see, I could go on. I'm not, this is just, I, I don't care for this program at all, at all. Um, and I'm making that not emotionally, well, it is emotional to me because this, this program is not going to teach the majority of our students. And the majority of students are tier two students. And this program is not going to get them what they want. I just thought, are your kids going to learn? Are our kids going to learn? Yeah, we'll learn. But the kids that will, will not learn this way are the majority of our kids. So my question is, my concern, first of all, this, this how, whatever the expression is, this train has left the station. Yeah. So this is what we have to support. And that's why I'm saying we must support professional development. Because this is going to be a really difficult process to implement. Because you're going to have to change, the, you're giving them new materials. And I'm, I have three pages of notes of things they have to change. Because it's incorrect. It's just, it, they're, doing the, they're doing incorrect things that could cause mislearning and confusion. And so I think this year we really have to look at the assessments. I think we have to look at the, we have to trust Lindy and Bonnie to show us these assessments. Formative assessments should be going on every two to three minutes with our lowest performing kids. Certainly at least once a week with our tier two kids. Um, and we need to see those assessments. And we can't wait for a whole year to see the tier two kids are not making it in this program. If we see in a month's time, because that's all you're gonna, it, at six weeks, eight weeks, these kids aren't doing it, then we better have something other than that $200,000 to put the majority of our kids in. Because this program is not going to do it. Well, not I think that, you know, I think that I have not yet seen, and I don't know if you have or anyone has, you know, I mean, we went through and we, when we chose contractors for our, for our building assessment, we used a really pretty standard evaluative process of saying, everyone looks at all the bids, break them down and, and, and sort them and, and award them points in these, in these categories, build out a matrix, you know, a rubric that shows, so you can say, here's why we chose this over that. I have not seen that we've really looked at anything besides Fontes and Pinnell at the, at, the, mm -hmm. at the level, or I have not, Bruce has not well, shown me anything. responded, Mary, now I went, I, I asked about that call mm -hmm. because I've um, requested that when I went to the SU to visit with Mary Ellen, I didn't get it then, and I've requested that in several emails. The last one she said if I could come to the SU again, she would have the rubrics, the other programs. I also want to know who was on the committee. Because when I moved back to Vermont four years ago, everyone was using F and P, and this is where we are now. I know there's new materials. That means nothing to me. That means nothing. You just pile on materials, but it's not embedded phonics. It's not okay. These are the sounds you teach. So these are the words you have. So those are the words that are in the story. This is not a decodable text. This is not a sequence of sounds to words to story. So I will look at that, Carl. I, Mary Ellen has said that she good, and because, I will go back I mean, down it, to it, the. It SGA. seems like we we went down. We kind of we we kind of bought into what the, the presentation of uh, around the updated version of what we had, and we yeah. didn't really break it all out like that. Yeah. The person that, that uh, you know, helped us guide and do our assessment and our evaluation made this recommendation and now apparently is, is going to be working for us as the implementation person on it, which doesn't really, you know, it, it, I, I find that, you know, I, questionable. I'm not gonna do, do, Can I ask you to clarify what you mean? She guided us on this process, picking? The, right, no, the, she didn't. She, she did not. not. She, she came in not. and audited the current Status of each classroom okay. and teaching. Okay, I was then, 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 I, then I misunderstood what Bruce had right. said yeah, before. No, no, she yeah. didn't. So, the, so she came in and she did an evaluation of where we stood. But she's she talking about that last meeting. That was what that special meeting was. Right. So she just she made the assessment and for the whole um, district. But she was very she did not, good. She did not specifically recommend. No, this, this decision she was made before her. she, did she came go to in. training. Did she go to F and B training? You mean with our group that just yeah. went? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. Okay, so then I'm still going to question, and I understand I got an answer. I'm still going to question again. This whole thing is 
why did Deb Rice go? And I know she's done a wonderful, this is nothing against Deb yeah, Rice in mm -hmm. any way. She's going to be retired. Yes, she's going to be involved in it, but why didn't we send a, a teacher? Why don't we try to get Amy if she was going to be involved yeah, well, that's, in SF&P? You know, and, and I think, again, the, the train has left the station. This is what we've got. I think it's very important that we support the administration in doing, in, 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 in our, our building administration in doing this, but I think it's very, very important that we really watch, oh, just yeah. as boards, we watch that we're getting the value that we got out of this because, yes, the answer that, oh, this is grant money, don't worry about it, it's grant money. This is grant money that could be spent on family interventionists, that could be spent on, you know, a, a lot of other programs. That, well, and that, Carl, that, how that much is going to be left over it. for Tier 2 now? We've just spent $200,000. That's a how lot of money. How much is going to be left over for the majority of our kids? You know, we certainly spent, we spent a bunch of the, the, the $200,000 just on uh, what's her name to be the leader of the project, you know, the, the, the salary, part of the salary piece. Mm -hmm. That's, um, I don't know what's going to be be out of there, but I really, I think we, I think it's important that we see a budget and we see we, we, we see the, the the planning of it and we see results and we watch those results oh, and we make sure that they're not, you know, they're, they're not what you're ta talking about, which is, you know, there is going to be a bounce because we've got we put a focus and we put an organization to it, so it's going to improve, right. you know, but is it going to improve beyond, you know. In, in an equivalent amount to the to the investment we've made in, 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 in this program. I have to ask you again, I really am just amazed. You've never met a consultant. I haven't. I haven't. So they're not providing any on site training at all. Not I haven't heard I haven't so heard. So who's gonna be doing the district training? You're talking uh, about in June? Or just in general? Well, there's special tra no in June you two are going to be just but who is doing this is a unified effort not everyone went thank goodness to Boston so what who who is going to be providing this training so my understanding because I met with Mary Ellen yesterday is that um so part of Amy Toth who you're referring to yes. about the consulting piece we have to follow the correct, even though we all, you guys all approved for her to hopefully fill Deb Rice's spot. We have to go through the hiring process per the master agreement. So that's what's happening right now. Once that goes through, and we should know by next week, then my understanding is that plan of who's rolling out what type of training will then be planned out and why Mary Ellen said she would plan to come to the May meeting to explain what the training looks okay, like. Because a and I and Amy didn't even go to the Boston training, and she's going to be learning it new, along with everyone else, everybody else, and then being in charge of the training. And that's why I'm going to say again, someone better contact F and P and say, "What the hell? Mm -hmm. We just spent two hundred thousand dollars. You're not sending a person here." Well, and we also need to make sure. And this is the last piece that I wanted to say on this matter is, I always get nervous when. We have a person that's supposed to be in front of our kids, um, you know, doing some, you know, doing some ex extra task to help get that person in the building or, or, or whatever. I'm concerned that, you know, Amy is going to have the responsibilities that Deb Rice had in in the Stockbridge building going forward, as well as the responsibilities for leading this this program that she hasn't had a lot of training on at this point yet. And my concern would be that. Will she be pulled away from the But the, I don't think she's of, going to be leading it, Paul. Is she going to be leading that the, the training? Was for her to lead? I think the plan is for her to do some. That's and certainly the plan. The coaching aspect. Right. Of the coaching. Right. Is right. But we need to we need to make sure that you know that while we're worried about our personal development, <laughs> is also train that she's right. doing. You know that that that, that she's not <laughs> Trust me, I'm focused not on her out of on the, the, uh, the, the, the no, the but she, other she's things. learning it like we're learning it. I'm not like I'm not like learning it, but like everybody else is learning it. She's learning it. And a couple of things, you know, I've acknowledged. I can't answer. You know why? No, I know. No, and I, I know. please understand. Jane, I don't. I don't, we don't think that. We at don't all. think that at all. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to say is, I think you guys have. I think you're an essential component of why our scores are not going to get somewhat better, but they're going to get significantly better, is the support that you provide. I think you know you've worked with us both long enough to know neither one of us are very faint of heart. 
there are things that we've been advocating for strongly. We will continue to advocate. We've made it clear that our teachers and our staff are ready to move, and therefore we're going to move. Um, we know we have to shore up pieces of that program. We know we have to find people who can come in and do training on all sorts of things, questioning techniques, running records, effective uh, sequence of, of sounds and symbols. Um, and we are prepared to do that work. The next thing you've heard me say before, and I'm going to encourage you to continue to demand this of us, I, just quick background. I'm the chair of the school board or over across the mountain. Um, no school board that I've ever been involved in ever asked frequently enough to look at student achievement data. You need to continue to keep that an ongoing, almost a standing item Absolutely. on your agendas. How did we do on SBAC? How did we do on SBAC science? Star 360 evaluations uh, are coming up. Show us the week after they're done. How many kids are, are in the green? How many kids are in the blue? How many kids are in the red? How many kids are in the yellow? And how many kids have moved? Who's moved from red to yellow and yellow to blue and blue to green? Why aren't there more kids? What do you attribute the success of these kids to? We sort of sorted out our schools to the point now where we both feel very comfortable spending being able to spend a lot of time in the world of curriculum. I will admit, since I came here last December, I've been trying to fix other things. I haven't done a ton of curriculum work. But now we're both poised to make that um, a primary part of what we do every single day, every single week. Um, and so I think the biggest help the board can be to us right now is continue to hold us, continue to support us. Thank you very much for the support you gave Absolutely. us tonight. But continue to hold us accountable for how is that program being implemented, what professional development has been offered, and how are our kids doing. That's the only reason we come to these meetings and we have these meetings and you take these jobs and we take these jobs is because we take seriously how well we can help kids learn. As you said, right now we're not doing so great. We have far too many kids who aren't meeting the standard without no, no disagreement about that. We have to make that our number one priority, not only in literacy, but we've got similar issues in mathematics that we have to tackle. So the, um, I guess the last thing I'll say about this, I think you already know this, but I'm going to feel better if I say it. Lindy and I are both passionate about kids' academic progress. And you're going to see us working very, very hard to change the picture that we now have because it's not okay. And I understand all the concerns, and I'm going to work very hard to address those concerns. I don't doubt that. I really don't doubt that. I'm just, the analogy I gave to Bonnie the other day, you can be the best surgeon in the world. You're not operating on this body with a butter knife. You can be the best teacher in the world. The three people I'm teaching now, I could never teach them without a, a, a specific, scientifically designed instructional tool. And that is the opposite of this. We are not putting a scientific instructional tool in the hands of our teachers. And that's what they need. They don't need this process because it isn't one. Because it isn't one. I'm also going to suggest, and I certainly would do, not, not do it now, but I think Bonnie's absolutely right. I think because I'm so concerned about this program that we have an obligation as a board to, to do just what Bonnie said, to hold everyone's feet to the fire, to look at this and to see assessments. And therefore, I think we have to be a knowledgeable board. I think we have to know what we're voting for. Because I'm going to say as much as professional development as we can get, oh my god, let's get it. But I want us to know the kind of professional development that we should get that's effective and that's going to pay off. So if, if you would like, and I don't want to push myself, guys. I feel very yin and yang between this. But I would like to present, at, at, give me 10 minutes a board meeting, 15 minutes a board meeting, just to present some research to you of why professional development is so important of why the quality of our teacher is so important. So that, or what kind of, let's us look at a rubric of curriculum. Let, let us see, did you know the picture shouldn't be on there? No. no, no. So let's look at that. I mean, let's, let's us be knowledgeable so that we can look at that, not just me, so we can look at that and say, wait a minute, this is not what a, a scientifically designed instructional tool should look at. That is not that. 
So if you want, I, I would like to present just, just a little bit of research each time, not on student achievement necessarily, but what we should know as a board, what will make us, what will give us the schema where we can support them in whatever they have to do to make this better. Because again, it's here. So let's be knowledgeable about how we get it out, how we change it, whatever we have to do to do it. Right. Sure. Do you want? Yeah. Can you do that on the seventh, on May seventh? Can you give us a few minutes then? Yeah. All right. Let's Thank let's you. let's then, let's add that in. And I love the idea of asking about the student achievement, so we know where we are. With our I can tell you what they gave me uh, at the last SU meeting. They gave us our uh, star reading scores. Um, Rochester. Uh, had 82% uh, of their kids participate in the test. Stockbridge had 78%. Uh, percent. Um, proficiency came out that only 39% of the Rochester children are reading at or above 50%, or the, the, the mean, 50% mean, and that 52% uh, of Stockbridge are, are, are reading at that level. And this That's is information you got from the SU? Yep. So, so we should have that at our meetings absolutely. here. Absolutely. I would actually encourage you to ask for a little bit more detailed reporting. Exactly. Yeah, a detailed Without report and, and names, maybe we can talk about how, what I'm looking at when I'm looking at, you know, what these But like mean. one thing this doesn't include is like the primary grades because they don't take this particular assessment. Right. Which test was that? This is the STAR 360. Uh, what's it? Is it reading? Yeah, reading and math. Reading. There's a reading and a math one, but the primary grades, meaning kindergarten, most definitely to take something called Star 360 Early Literacy Literacy. Assessment, which combines the math and the so what do we point to Joni make? I just want to expand on a point. Did you just call me Joni? Yes. 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 The more educated a board is, the more the board understands about how youngsters learn and how we're progressing in the school, the better youngsters are going to do. I'm going to say something blunt. I don't want to offend anybody. It's the, I have the same problem in, in the board I'm on. We spend way too much time talking about roofs and tires and energy audits. Really, we have people at the central office that should do all that, and we should right. just trust them to do that. Because what we abdicate on, when we get our time all spent in that stuff, is we advocate on understanding how kids learn reading, how youngsters learn mathematics, what are our assessment results. So I'm going to push this a little bit to every time you put an agenda together to say, is this really how we want to spend our time? Do we really have to spend an hour and a half doing this, or would we rather hear from from Mitch on a learning sequence, <laughs> or, Joey. or Lindy on social study standards yeah. and how yes. they should be, or Bonnie on mathematics, or Bruce or Mary Ellen? Absolutely. Yes. That's how you should fill your yes, agendas. Exactly. There's certain business pieces we have to have, certain things you have to vote on, but I think we have to raise the trust levels and the expectation level of what people at the central office can help us do because they can do a lot of what clutters up our agendas. Yeah. Connie's right. <laughs> <laughs> I got that. I got that, Jack. Thank you very much. So I'm only that was a good one, too. You just I, that was I'm only going to make one good. point, um, and I don't know if it matters, but May 7th, the night you asked Mitch to do some work on reading, we might possibly be having the facilities report coming back to us. <laughs> Speaking of tires and trips. <laughs> so I don't know if you want to. Yeah, well, it's still 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Just, 15 just wanted to mention it. We want to ease into this. Joe, you don't want me to talk. Yes, I do. But I'm sure you can't do it in 15 minutes. That I know. Well, we can put a timer on. All right. That. We, our next our next uh, regular meeting is the seventh of May. We do we do. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and and, and conclude the piece for our our, our, our viewers.